Deshaun, I've been following you ever since you threw your first pass at Clemson, replacing Cole Stout. I remember the six touchdowns in your first college start, and it was in the stands for the title game against Bama when they had the onside kick to keep you from getting back on the field. My wife went to Clemson, so I watched every game, and I've known you were going to be great since that first year. I wanted the Bears to draft you in 2017, and when they traded up, I was positive your name was going to be the one called. But this isn't about me. I'm a Chicagoan, and I want to implore you to consider the Bears when, frankly, they haven't done much to deserve it. This is a football town second to none. The legendary 85 Bears, this city's last Super Bowl champion, still treated like royalty to this day. But you would give this city something it's never had. Something not even that all-time team could provide, a star quarterback. The Bears have never had a quarterback throw for 4,000 yards. You've done that in two of your three full seasons. The Bears have never had a quarterback throw for 30 touchdowns. You eclipsed that total with ease last year. The second you became a Bear, you'd be the best quarterback in the history of this city. Don't worry about the cold. That doesn't stop the best from lighting up the scoreboard. Don't worry about them not meeting with you in the past. Matt Nagy's in charge now. Ask your buddy Pat Mahomes about him. He'll tell you he isn't the problem here. In fact, he once said, Nagy was great with me in my transition to the NFL. Being able to relate to me, being able to let me go out there and play fast and be who I am. Also, I know all about your charity work and how you've helped your mom and the people in your inner circle your whole life. This city respects that and is always looking for people of influence to help out. There's plenty of work to be done here, and you can make a meaningful difference in a city that needs it. Chicago would never take you for granted. You'd have the coach, the city, and a shot at sports immortality. Your old coach Dabo Sweeney said before the draft that passing on you would be like passing on Michael Jordan. Well, we reaped the benefit of a team passing on MJ once upon a time and parlayed that into the greatest team in the history of sports. The Bears made the mistake of passing on you once, but if you let them correct that mistake, You'd own this city like Jordan in the 90s, and if you bring this town a Super Bowl, you'll reach a stratosphere that only guys named Michael and Walter ever have in Chicago. At least think about it. You see, for my money, Chicago is the best city in the world. It's got everything except a quarterback. Well said, Danny Parkins. Well said. Let's go! <laughs> tradition last year where they celebrate their wins the correct way. Waddle and Sylvie, ESPN 1000, don't miss it.
minutes of rain would wash away 108 years of drought. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and better than ever. I am your host, Gregory Braggs Jr., and this is my co-host, Johnny B., as you always know him in his world-famous segment, Johnny B. for three, but he's sitting in as the co-host tonight as our guy Jake is taking the night off, hanging out with his lovely wife, Elizabeth. So how are we doing tonight, Johnny B., back from your AFC Championship glory which we are going to dig deep into here later on how does it feel buddy feeling pretty good i gotta say it's like the annual pilgrimage three years in a row kansas city hosting the afc championship and you know what meatloaf said two out of three ain't bad let's go yeah congratulations again johnny b you know you are a resident chiefs fan for those of you that are tuning in for the first time and don't understand why johnny b is adorned in all the chiefs regalia and all the memorabilia behind him johnny b is a diehard chiefs fan but he is our in-house gambling aficionado duck race you know extraordinaire a man that wears many hats and uh, you know, always a staple here at Bragg's in the stands. So, you know, here in just a few moments, we're going to be having our guy, my guy, Tanner Gentry, formerly of the Chicago Bears and currently a wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Just sent him a message along here in a little, a little just a few minutes ago, and he should be joining us shortly. And I'm excited to, you know, pick his brain because Johnny B, you were at the game the AFC championship, Kansas city versus the Buffalo bills. Tanner just got on the Buffalo bills. He, you know, uh, joined the team just before the playoffs started. So I'm interested to pick his brain on what the experience like was like to get to that point and then face your vaunted chiefs team. You might be irritating him a little bit with all the, the Chiefs stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he respect, I'm sure he has to respect what you guys are doing over there. Well, I respect him, but he's trying to get done as a player, you know, as a competitor and all that. And, 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 you know, things happen for a reason and sometimes situations arise and hopefully he can use it as motivation, you know, to see the celebration. And I know he wants to get there one day himself. So as an athlete myself, you got to respect the grind. So I'm here for it. Let's go. Absolutely. We're always bringing the sunshine, Andrew Tarbell. That's what we're doing here at Bragg's in the stands. And uh, without further ado, we are going to bring in our guy, Tanner Gentry. I'm not sure if he, are you, are you there, Tanner? Can you hear us? There you are, Tanner Gentry, live and in color. He's working on Sorry, guys. his, uh, no, you're good, my man. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, you know, I was going to give you the, 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 the intro, of course, without further ado, because uh, I do have, you know me, Tanner. I got all the footage of all your best plays, you know, in training camp history. And, uh, you know, this was, you know, rookie year, my man. And this is when I caught my eye on you. And uh, you were making plays right away, you know, coming out as, uh, you know, training at training camp at the Chicago Bears. And now you've made it all the way to, you know, the Buffalo Bills in your journey. And that's what I wanted to bring you on tonight, and I appreciate you carving out a little bit of time with us uh, as you get settled in. But uh, that's really what I want to ask you, Tanner, and I appreciate you joining us again, once again. Uh, you know, but what has your journey been like? You know, from the Bears, and now you're on the Bills. You know, and you've 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 gone to many things, the XFL, and then that the the XFL had its you know shortcomings. You know, what what has it been like to go through that journey, and now where you're at now, and what is it you know what does it feel like to know that the Bills saw enough of you? here in these last couple months that they want to keep you in, in their future plans. 
Yeah, man. Uh, it's been a whirlwind to say the least. Um, I mean, this business is crazy. Um, there's so much that goes into it. Um, it's, it's a lot more than just ball, um, at the end of the day, but I'm thankful for it all. Um, you know, the journey to, to get to where I am today, it's all kind of, kind of made me who I am now. Um, but yeah, just, you know, Chicago was a great time. Uh, my wife and I loved it out there. Um, lots of good memories for us. Um, and then, you know, just moving on to, uh, the XFL, that was a, a pretty interesting experience, you know, coming from Chicago, coming from the NFL to a kind of a new startup league. Um, it was definitely a lot different. Um, I actually had a pretty bad ankle sprain, um, right at the end of training camp, like pretty much before the first game. Um, and I had missed the first six, five, six games, I think. And right when I was coming back, I had practice for two weeks. I was ready to play that next game. And that Friday they had shut the league down, um, for COVID. So it was a pretty big bummer there. Um, you know, after, right after that, the league gets shut down. I, I come back here to, to my home in uh, Aurora, Colorado, and um, I had actually, you know, started up a little training company um, out here, just training some high school and, and youth kids. It originally just started training receivers, um, and it honestly blew up kind of crazy. Um, got, you know, quarterbacks, defensive guys all involved, hired some coaches, and now it's kind of evolved into uh, what we're doing seven on seven teams um, and it, it's getting pretty big out here. So that's been really exciting. Um, you know, definitely have been enjoying coaching. I, I feel like it's been, you know, kind of helping me as a player. Once I started coaching, like it was just kind of crazy. Um, just like the amount of mental reps you get and things like that. Um, so that was really cool. And, you know, making an impact on the kids lives and something that when I was a kid, you know, didn't really get that type of coaching. So it's definitely cool to be able to give back to these guys and, um, yeah, just talking about Buffalo, it was uh, kind of out of the blue. Um, you know, I played with Josh Allen in college. That's one of my best friends. Right. Um, and we have a, a really tight relationship. And he actually just called me, and he was like, hey, man, are you healthy? Um, you know, uh, have you been training, all that stuff? And I'm like, yeah, of course, like, I'm good to go. And the next day I was called out there, um, you know, for a workout and whatnot and uh, ended up getting assigned to the practice squad got to practice with those guys for um, the playoff run, which was, uh, you know, an unbelievable experience. And, uh, yeah, I was blessed to be able to have them sign me for an opportunity this uh, upcoming year. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I was really happy for you when I saw it cross my Instagram timeline in the Buffalo Bills blue. I mean, when it didn't work out for you here in Chicago, you know, it it was only stood to reason to think that, hey, Buffalo was a perfect spot for you. As you mentioned, Josh Allen was – your college teammate and you guys tore it up there at Wyoming, you know, and I would, that was my next question was uh, curious on how they had you on your radar, but you explained it there. So I'll move on to my next one. And what is that like? And how exciting is it for you to play with your former college teammate, seeing him rip it up on the biggest stage, moving all the way to the AFC championship. I didn't formally introduce my co-host here, Johnny B. He's in his full chiefs regalia. He's a lifelong <laughs> season ticket holder. Chiefs fan, so Love he it. ain't trying to rub it in. He's he's yeah, as diehard as they come. Right there. First of all, <laughs> let's just say that I did. You know, I am an NFL guy. Yes, I'm a Chiefs fan. I'm a season ticket holder. All the stuff that goes with that. I was a tortured fan, as you know. But I did make a lot of money on the Bills this year as well. So let's not say. <laughs> You know that I don't give the love out to the Bills, and I actually have a couple really good friends who I met at the Super Bowl tailgating last year that actually got married at halftime of the Bills game in Buffalo last year for the NFL 100. So we had a little bit of back and forth, obviously the you know a little bit with last week with the AFC Championship. So I am a uh, a supporter of any team that is rolling and can make our fans the money. Yeah, Johnny B's our gambling aficionado here. I love at, it. At so, so he's That's always awesome. trying to make that paper. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, he was in the stands for the game. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure as far as with your active, you know, with your roster status, whether or not were you on the sidelines for the game, were you in the stands, or were you watching at home for the AFC Championship? We were uh, all the guys, you know, all the – practice squad guys uh guys that were inactive for the game we were all we were out there we were up in a box uh watching okay. the game it was a pretty interesting experience honestly because you know like the the glass window in front of the box where we sit they had it open and there sure. was fans like right there and they were i mean the chiefs were playing well so you know the fans are definitely talking their talk 
And, uh, you know, a lot of our guys didn't really like that too much. So we had to end up shutting those windows. Um, but yeah, man, it was, uh, it was, it was a really cool experience. I hadn't, I'd never been to that stadium, um, before, so it was cool to experience that. And, um, you know, that's a great organization and they got a really solid team, but. And as um, I mentioned, yeah. how cool was it to see your college teammate, as you meant, mentioned a great friend of yours, Josh Allen, he's starting now he's playing on the biggest stage, AFC championship against Patrick Mahomes, you know, the, the, you know, the reigning MVP, what has it been like to watch him, you know, mature in the NFL and how does it feel to now be reunited with him? And do you, do you are you excited about what, what could happen between the two of you? Yeah, man. Um, it's been, it's been unbelievable watching him. Um, you know, from the moment he stepped on campus at Wyoming, I knew he was a special player. Um, you know, and I'm being, me being a receiver, you know, you gotta be friends with the quarterback, man. That's how you get the ball. So, you know, <laughs> I started that friendship real quick and it honestly just, it turned into something more than, you know, a, a friendship on the field. Um, I mean, we, we hang out all the time. Um, you know, he's, he's, I consider him, you know, blood couldn't make us any closer so that's my brother right there and um you know i'd do anything for him but it's just cool that we've you know kind of built this relationship and i'm super proud of him just you know how much he's grown um these first couple years in the league it's super tough for uh you know quarterback coming in a lot of pressure you know he played a lot of started his rookie year um you know and just the, the type of criticism that goes on and for him to just block out all that noise and just keep getting better year after year and uh, I mean, it definitely shows this year. He's he's playing on another level. Um, you know, he's he's understanding the game a lot better. And um, man, it's just been it's been a blast to re- to watch him. You know, just kind of crack his you know potential. But he 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 can get so much better too. That's the crazy thing. And uh, I mean, he's truly a, a generational talent. I mean, you talk about arm talent, mm. athleticism, all that stuff. And you know, the intangibles of um you know a quarterback as far as a leader um you know when you when you talk about running through a wall for a guy i mean that's him man like you know when we when he was in the huddle in wyoming like that you know everybody listens and when i get to buffalo it's the same way when he talks everybody listens so he he's definitely that type of leader and you know that more than anything athletically and physically that's that's what you want for your your franchise qb so I'm I'm definitely excited to be a part of the, the organization, man. It, it feels super surreal. It's when I saw him in the locker room the first day. It was just, it was a, a moment I'll never forget, man. Because you know that, it just going back to college. It had been so long, and uh, yeah, it was like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah, literally getting the like, band wow. back together, yeah, baby. For real. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, man, I mean, that's was, what I mean, because awesome, if you so. go back and look at your days at Wyoming, that was going to be one of my questions to you was, well, what it was, what were your memories like playing at Wyoming? It looks like a, an amazing school and you, you, you guys put up a highlight reel, the two of you, you know, what are you, what are some of your memories of playing at Wyoming? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, my first, my first two years was a real struggle. I mean, I, I started as a true freshman um, and you know, we, we weren't that good, um, at all. And, you know, sophomore year, new coaching staff comes in, uh, Craig Bull and his staff. And, um, I remember just, you know, thinking about transferring at times and just cause you know, he's bringing in a run heavy offense and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of, kind of trying to cover myself and make sure, you know, my future's good. And, um, I, I'm, I'm super glad I stuck with it because, you know, he's, he's an unbelievable coach. And, uh, you know, my favorite coach that I played for. Um, and then, you know, my junior year, uh, I, I started off really hot with Josh. Josh actually, so we had a different starter. Um, he, he, Cameron Kaufman, he transferred, a uh, graduate transfer from Indiana. He started off the season, got hurt. Josh came in like third game of the year, tried to run some guy over and broke his collarbone. So in like the first drive of the game, I'm like, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Chill out. So the rest of the game, we have our third string guy, and we're running the ball like crazy, man. It was just awful. This baby but, um, face assassin is running people yeah, over. Man. I can't oh, believe yeah, it. Yeah. Josh Allen is huge, man. He's a big dude, man. Yeah, big, oh, I mean, man. he still looks like a little kid. It's so funny. He's got a little facial hair going now, but he definitely nah, has the man. baby face. <laughs> I got, I got a buddy, yeah. uh, Kevin. I got a buddy, Kevin Devine, that he he has literally looked the same since he was five years old. I have a feeling Josh yeah. is the same. Way. Oh yeah, but, he's the same way. But yeah, but yeah and then, you know, just a senior year after that, uh, it was just it was a great. Uh, that was you know, my my favorite year ever playing football was that year, and we were winning games. 
um, you know, which makes everything better because we hadn't won nothing in three years. So, and all those guys, you know, had experienced that. And it was just awesome that, that Josh and I kind of had built that, um, that, that connection, you know, that whole off season. And he, he had full confidence in me, you know, every single play. And um, it, it was just special, man. We, we did a lot of cool things on the field. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a, it was a great time, man. Lots of fun. Tanner, I had a question in regards to uh, seeing all the highlights and stuff. Obviously, Greg is kind of like me when he likes to get the videos, and I saw all the highlights of you from the tra or training camp with Chicago. Can you tell me the difference for you, you know, going from that senior year in Wyoming and, you know, the, your your favorite football year ever, and then going into Bears training camp and, and getting that experience, and then the whirlwind, like you said, it's more than just ball, and then just the difference of the intensity going into the playoff run this year with Buffalo after you reunited with Josh. Yeah, so I mean, just just coming out of college, you know, coming to the Bears, um, it, it was crazy. Just because you know you're you're really in the NFL, and it's kind of a a shocking moment. And in everybody, I mean, it is what everyone says it is. Everybody's really good. Um, and you know, I I came in with a lot of confidence. You know, I'm I'm, I'm extremely confident in myself. Um, and I just tried to make as many plays as I can while I was there. And um, you know, how whatever however that all sh uh, you know sh shook out, whatever you want to call it, I. You know, there was a lot of things I couldn't control, but, um, you know, I definitely don't have any regrets um, from, from being in Chicago, man. I love some of those training camp memories in Bourbon A were just were awesome. And uh, that, that was a lot of fun having all the fans out there and stuff. And, you know, I got to play in some in some real games my rookie year, uh, which was a blast. Got, you know, a few recorded a few of my first, you know, in game regular season catches, which was awesome. And, um, you know, just a lot to learn from, you know, you're coming as a rookie and, um, there's, there's so much you can learn from the other guys in front of you, you know, the vets. And, um, then, you know, after that, you know, Nagy's staff comes in and, um, it, it, it kind of a lot changed and, but yeah, I mean, it was just awesome, you know, like learning, especially yeah. learning from a guy like a Rob too, um, you know, who has, is a seasoned vet, um, you know, one of the best in business in my opinion. So I just learned a lot from wow. him. Um, yeah. And then just, that gives you a new mindset now. Uh, yeah. I have to imagine, do you, I mean, cause you are, you got a futures contract with the bills and congratulations on that again, by the way, but it's got, does it give you a different mindset? As you said, you worked with Alan Robinson, one of the best in the business technical in his route running in his footwork and everything else. Now do you, even though it's a futures contract, do you feel like you have a little bit of a veteran savvy to you going into this? Or are you, you know, not taking anything for granted? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, me now compared to when I first came in the league, it's it's head and shoulders above, um, you know, just because gaining all that experience and, um, you know, I feel like I'm truly at my peak and athletically and I feel the best I ever have. And, um, you know, just mentally, just from all the reps and um, all that type of stuff, everything that I've learned, you know, I just, I feel, you know, more confident than I ever have been. Um, I'm definitely thankful for the Bills giving me an opportunity to co compete for a job, and that's what I'm going to do, man. I'm I'm coming for a job, and um, by any means, so yeah, I'm I'm fully ready for it. Yeah, I'll, and I I have no doubts. You know, people, we've had a lot of different players that have come through training camp. Daniel Braverman. There was a few other guys that fit what your mold is to the average Bears fan that just watches you play, to, that goes to camp and just w sees players on their service. But I always contended that, you know, everybody wanted to make you the slot guy. But I tried to tell people that, you know, couldn't see what I was seeing at camp. Like, this guy is on the outside making, like, jump ball catches. What? <laughs> Not, like, and the same thing you saw it in college, too. Well, you know, describe your ability to, to be able to – you know, make these because I'm sorry, I've seen it like a million times, and people would always make fun of me when I'm like, dude, Tanner's a baller. And they're like, I haven't seen. It. I'm like, just give him an opportunity. And I feel like the NFL, it's all about timing and opportunity. What what makes your ability to be able to grant, you know, get those one-handed, you know, uh, you know, circus catches so consistently in the way that you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just going back, um, you know, I've always been really confident in my hands. Um, I feel like that is the, the, the best attribute that I have is my ability to catch the football in any situation. Um, so I, I use that to my full advantage. And um, I feel like, you know, all this time after I've learned how to run routes, how to create separation, releases, all that stuff, you know, that's only going to add to my ability, which, you know, the most important thing is ultimately catching the ball. But I guess just 
I'll just say it's it's really a mentality. Um, you know, whenever the ball's in the air, it's not 50-50, it's 100-0. You know, you're catching the ball no matter what. A guy, I tell everybody, my favorite receiver that I've ever watched play, who, he's, he's, yeah, he's probably my favorite still, Des Bryant, man. Like, when he was with the Cowboys, just the way he attacked the ball in the air was just incredible, you know? Like, he could be completely covered, but it didn't matter. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins plays the same exact way. Um, so, you know, I mean, these DBs in the league are, you know, elite athletes. They're 4-4, they're 4-3 four, 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 every time. They're long. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to be wide open all the time. So when you got to make that contested catch, um, that, that's when it ultimately matters. So. And a lot of times on third down, you know, that's that's the t- kind of how it is, whether a team blitzes or they don't blitz. You know, you got to make some con- contested catches to move the chains. And then obviously with your ability to go, you know, not just in the slot like Greg was showing, it, the versatility in the modern NFL I think is important as well. Um, you know, they can move you around. You know, they can get you the ball in space. You know, you can run the route. You can you can do a lot of different things. It's only going to help you down the road. <laughs> yeah, I was watching yeah. one highlight film with you where you were doing an end around in college, and you were seeing oh, yeah. to it up a little bit, getting a yeah, few man, running. I, I had to do a lot in college. We uh, we didn't have too much depth, uh, you know, in college. So I was asked to do a lot, but it was definitely. I mean, that's it. That's where I, you know, old, I I had been an outside receiver in high school. You know, I guess I played in the slot a little bit too. But um, you know, when I got to Wyoming, especially my junior year. That's when they started r- truly just moving me around all over the place and, you know, just learn how, ha- learn how to run a lot of those uh, routes in the slot. And you're right, when you get to the NFL, I mean, especially when you're an undrafted guy like me, you know, you got limited opportunities. And like you talked about timing and opportunity, it's, I mean, it's, it, that's how it is for, you know, drafted guys, even first round picks. But when you're talking about an undrafted guy like that, it's, it's, that's it's everything. It, you know, people it don't realize everything. how much, goes into making a team like you said from first round down there's injury luck timing you know a guy can get a little injury and then someone comes and takes his place and then before you know it that guy's got his job and i've watched i watched it for 20 years at training camp and that's why it became i started just rooting for the underdogs it wasn't just because i was like oh this you know they they need it it truly was more fun to watch those guys go to work at camp than the big dogs because these guys you like you and Josh Bellamy you guys are fighting and scratching and clawing for every little no inch doubt. of what you're earning in the league and I found myself respecting that you know you first go to camp and you want to meet Devin Hester and Tommy Harris and all the big players and then all of a sudden you realize look at these guys scratching and clawing to play for the Chicago Bears and that's uh, you know that was where you caught my attention a guy like Josh caught my attention and you know it was a lot of fun you know we actually have a a question in the chat from Bear Lissimo, a huge Bears fan from across the pond in England, and he wants to know uh, what it's what it's like to to get a heater from Josh Allen, and do you hear it when it comes? Did you ever get a broken finger from Josh Allen? Luckily, no broken fingers, but when I say you hear it, you hear it. That thing is coming, and especially like when he first got to Wyoming, I remember like you know he gets there, he knows he's got the big arm, all that stuff, and he's trying to show it off. So <laughs> you know, and, and we're running slants. And he is throwing that thing as hard as he can. I remember having to like talk to him, like, bro, you really got to tone it down yeah, the slants a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, he 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 can put some serious zip on the ball, man. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. It's pretty remarkable, honestly. So uh, now that you've been with the Bills for a few weeks, for you know a couple months, you know whatever it's been, and uh, you were with the Bears for so long, give us your impression so far on. Whose fan base is crazier? Because you've seen the Bills fans, you know, at the precipice of the AFC Championship lore. Uh, you know, what fan base to you is crazier? Can you get a gauge yet? Um, yeah, I mean, the Bears fans, they, they're 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 pretty fun, man. I mean, I, it's hard to judge because when I was with Buffalo, there, you know, there wasn't really much fans around. Um, right. I mean, I do know that when we landed after the loss um 3 a.m i think there was hundreds of fans out there you know cheering and stuff so they definitely love their team um i mean i know chicago really loves their team as well they got great fans Uh, i mean i don't know about crazier because you know when you (laughs) see guys jumping through flaming tables uh and stuff like that that's pretty hard to beat apparently this is a tradition there i don't know what to make of (laughs) these guys they they do make bears fan like bears fans are crazy and I'm sure you learned that over the years, but these guys, I don't know. They're on another level. I was rooting for them. You know, you know, I was rooting for Johnny B's chiefs, but you know, if the bills had gotten there, these guys, these fans, my goodness, they certainly seem like they need it, you know, really badly. And I, you know, 
four Super Bowls in a row in the 90s to go down. I can't imagine what that feels like. I try to tell Bears fans all the time, there's different forms of misery. You can complain about not being a good team, but you know everyone's had it worse. Everybody can tell you something different in that regard. Uh, oh, Tanner, sure. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but you know, looking back on the Bears a little bit, and you know, with it, you know, obviously a lot of our viewers are huge Bears fans, and you do have some insight. You mentioned Matt Nagy when he came in, and you know, it, there was some uncertainty whether or not he was still going to be here when the season was over, and and everything. What what do you what 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 are your thoughts on Matt Nagy, and what was your relationship like with him? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think he's a great coach. Um, you know, he is a brilliant offensive mind. Um, definitely really cares about his players. Um, and, and that's kind of the vibe I got from him. And um, we had we had a pretty good relationship. Um, you know, he, he has a good relationship with a lot of his guys. And, um, you know, he's, he's pretty relatable to the players. Um, but he definitely cares about winning a lot. And, um, you know, it's just um, – it's it's been interesting just kind of seeing, especially since I've been gone, you know, just seeing how – um, how things have gone over there. Um, you know, you talk about that defense. Um, I mean, I remember practicing against those guys every day, and that is an elite defense. I mean, that it, it is when, that, when all those guys are healthy. That it is it is a really good defense. Um, you know, and and um, it's kind of it's kind of crazy to see all the things that you know with Mitch and stuff. Um, you know, because I came in with him. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I think he's a great player. He's he's he's, he's truly a great talent, and um, I know. You know, if, if things don't work out for him in Chicago, I know he'll get an opportunity elywhere, um, you know, and, and he'll have his chance. But um, that yeah, was man. certainly going to be my next question to you was Mitchell. <laughs> I get a lot of crap. You know, I'm the Bears fan. You know, these last few years, you know, everyone's starting to follow the stuff that I do. And, you know, I try to tell people, hey, this kid can play. It didn't work out. And I get made fun of, oh, you just are a M- Mitch ball washer. But I, to me, I see a guy that, you know, obviously, you know, has to get better in certain areas, but so many things were going wrong these last couple of years. And it, you know, football is about timing, like I said before. And, you know, so do you, obviously you do feel that he's going to be able to move on from the bears and find somewhere and get comfy here in the NFL and, and become a, a, an everyday starter. You know, I'm not trying to say he's going to be top five quarterback in the league or anything like that, but do you think he can, you know, cozy himself into, you know, what an Alex Smith or a Ryan Tannehill turned into. Right. Yeah, I definitely do, man. I mean, he, like I said, he, he's, he's a really, I mean, he do, you don't get drafted, you know, second overall for nothing. Um, so, you know, for whatever reason, he, he hasn't been, you know, as success, as successful as many uh, Bears fans and people would have liked um, so far. He, he is a damn good player, man. He's a really accurate passer and he can make things happen outside of the pocket. Um, so I, I'm excited to, you know, see him get his next opportunity and I'm sure, you know, he's coming into that, you know, with a lot of, um, you know, motivation just because of what happened in Chicago and, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll be coming in with a, a lot different mentality. So, um, it'll be, it'll be good to watch. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's a good dude, man. Dude, Mitch is a good dude. He's my guy. Yeah, all is. you guys are, like you mentioned, you guys all came in in 2017. And the Bears at that time, you know, the years prior, nobody cared. They went in two, three, four games, not doing anything. And then you, uh, Mitch, Eddie Jackson, Tariq Cohen, Adam Shaheen all came in. And it felt like you guys just breathed new life into the camp. You could, like, that's where I go as a Bears fan and get to know the team. I'm not, like, diving into the draft and everything. It's when I go to camp, I see what the team is. And you could mm-hmm. feel it, you guys. It was mm-hmm. tangible. I'd never played football in my life, but you could feel the energy you guys had brought in. And that's what made me excited as a fan. And then you got now it's like all these years later, it's like, oh, Greg Mitch, the fanboy. I don't know if you saw Mitch got uh uh engaged the other day. I had mm-hmm. my friend photoshopping my freaking face. Oh, <laughs> I, I was joking. We were, we were gonna say I was like, I'm not even pulling this stuff up because it's ridiculous. And <laughs> I, God forbid I root for you guys, but I truly, I was so appreciative of you guys pulling the bears out from the abyss and making them interesting again, raising the level of expectation for fans. I mean, even at bears 100, one of my friends, uh, Brian Diddy, uh, he, he always makes fun of me because we were in line and you were pulling down the road where the line of bears fans from all over the world are on this road. And, uh, 
I saw you and you were kind of stopped for a second. So I was going to run up and say, what up? And then you start pulling away. And so it looks like I'm chasing your car. So now Diddy's like always telling, always giving me about the time. I don't even remember that, man. If I knew you were coming, you know how to stop, man. I know. You know, That's you know how I was just trying to say what's up. And now it looks like I'm running down the street going, Tanner. And I wasn't. I, was just, I didn't realize you were going to pull away, man. Oh, it's uh, all good, man. You know, another guy that wanted to say hi was Terrence. I don't know if you were uh, Terrence. Uh, oh, wanted yeah. to come. I was going to let him come on and say what's up, but then he ended up getting busy. But I did want to pass along the hello from Terrence. Awesome. You know, we're <laughs> you know we're all huge fans of yours. And and certain, I don't know how all Bears fans are, but me personally, I know Terrence and Johnny's the same way. I root for guys as they move on, and I'm certainly yeah. going to be rooting for you as, uh, you know, you play, you know, extend your career here with the Buffalo Bills. And I hope you and Josh Allen are lighting it up next year. It won't surprise me in the least. You think we'll see uh Bears Bills Super Bowl next year? Maybe we'll meet up at the dance. Hey, I don't know. I can't speak for the Bears, but I know the Bills yeah. are gonna be there. <laughs> I, can tell you this. I can tell you this, Tanner. The Bills are for real, the Chiefs are for real. That means we're gonna play each other every year for hopefully exactly. the next 10 or 12 years. I hope you're a part of it, dude. I can say what's up when all this COVID is over. You know, it would be great to see you play live, and we're going to be seeing each other, our teams, for a long time. And and um, I know you're going to catch on. It's all about timing. It's all about chemistry. It sounds like you and Josh have that. He's obviously a remarkable talent. The, you hear the ball whistle one time, you know what's up. And I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to watching you play when we play each other next year. That's right, man. Thanks, looking man. good, really looking good that. in that yes, football <laughs> booth. Looking it's good, good in color, it. man. Yeah. 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 It was it was cool seeing you, you know, on the rookie sidelines, you and oh, Tariq yep. going, getting excited, Jeez. you know, bringing That's new life. Guy, but now yep. you're the grizzly vet. You know, you ain't no you ain't no uh young spring chicken anymore. One more exactly. favor from you before I let you jet. And again, I appreciate all your time tonight, Tanner. Uh oh, man. really I appreciate you guys having me. Of course, man. Means a lot. Uh, I got this picture right here. It's in, in our intro. Yeah. I play every week. I got a little rotator of pictures at the end, and you're in it. You'll always be in my intro because, like I said, the 2017-2018 Bears will always hold a special place in my heart because you guys, you know, not only breathe new life into the organization, but honestly, you guys retweeting and pu pushing my stuff around, my silly little videos is the only reason I do this stuff. And this is a fun outlet for me and Johnny to, you know, uh, interact with Bears fans, especially in the last year, not being able to go to games. So all that sure. stuff honestly started with you guys, mm -hmm. and I will always be grateful for that. Uh, so I do have one more favor from you, Tanner. Would you mind giving us a station ID here at Braggs in the stands? I don't know if you're familiar with this little little game, but basically all you do is say who you are, you know, where you're from and who you play for, and you're listening to – brags in the stands and that's it and then i can cut it and play it to start our show sometimes so uh, i'll give gotcha, you a man. countdown if you're feeling comfy don't don't get nervous on an old network i was on bears barroom network they once and it took akeem hit the, the guy has got awesome beard game and he's tatted up i think he's gonna be fine i think he's gonna <laughs> hit out of the park no doubt brad in stands right Yes, Brags, in Brags in the stands. That's right. That's what everybody you, knows me as the guy in the stands yelling at the players. You know how I'm always harassing you guys. So that's basically it. Who you are, where you're from, who you play for. You're listening to Brags in the stands. So I'll give you a countdown, and I appreciate it again. So in three, two, one. Tanner Gentry from Aurora, Colorado, wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, and you're listening to Brags in the stands. Boom. Appreciate it, man. man. Hey, first All take. Right. It took, hey, 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 hell, he bro. took nine takes to do that one time. Yeah, on show. What's wrong with him, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. He's 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 a wild one. There's no doubt about that, but uh, he's a great hey, man. Greg, player. just want to say to you, man, thank you for all your support, you know, for – it means a lot to me, you know, the, the, the true fans that really support me. Um, you know, especially I, I consider myself an underdog as well. And, you know, uh, it just means a lot. And, and every every time I came off the practice field, I knew I could, you know, count on a video from you, a tweet from you, man. So I, <laughs> I always I appreciate hyped it. it. Never put up um, the I knew top. I could see my I, yeah, never... I knew I could see my high 
highlights right after practice. I would well, never put it. You no one understood that. People thought I was covering. I was just – I'm a hype man. I go there. I put oh, yeah. up the best plays. <laughs> and they were rolling 2017, 2018. It was no problem. And then everybody's like, what's going on? Why aren't you showing any of the drops? I'm like, that's not – that don't work like that. Yeah, yeah we don't of need course, to show that. <laughs> I'm the ultimate hype man. That's what I love to do. Uh, you know, I'm glad it's worked out for you. Truly, really excited for you. You found the perfect home. Uh, Josh Allen's the man, you know, uh, for setting that. Uh, you know, sounds like he helped push that in the right place. I know you guys are going to light it up next year. And I appreciate the kind words and everything, man. Uh, your family, your uh, wife, Caitlin, you guys all were real cool. You know, I would run into them at the games. A couple of them yeah. said hi to me. And I honestly, you guys were all great. And uh, we'll always be rooting for you here at Braggs in the Stands. And when you're lighting it up next year, maybe you can carve out a little time. And we only keep you on for like eight minutes tops once you become hey, man, once I, I you hit superstar for, I status. For you, man. I appreciate time. it. You're one of the uh, first true fans, man. I got oh, you. Oh, yeah, man. All day, every day, uh, 10 toes down, as Tariq Cohen likes to say. Yes, and that's sir. what yeah. I have for you guys all day long. Uh, Tanner, again, appreciate you. Nice to meet you, brother. Good luck. Yeah. Yes, Enjoy sir. the rest Thank of you. Thank you guys night. so much. Appreciate you having me on. That was a blast. Yes. We'll catch up with you real soon. And that's Tanner Gentry from the Buffalo Bills and formerly the Chicago Bears. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that's what we do all day, every day. Uh, Alex Acevedo sending his best wishes along to Tanner Gentry. I should have pulled that up, while we were on, but I wasn't doing any. I'm He's just an easy guy to root for. Oh, I'll tell you that right now. 100%. You know, uh, really easy guy. Once you met him a few times, and that was what was so cool about training camp is how close you can get to the players and interact with them. And, to be able to, you know, not only see them making plays, which is the first place where they kind of jump out to you. And then you can catch, you know, catch them after practice. They, you know, take a picture, get an autograph. and a little autograph, whatever. You can kind of see which ones are the guys that are easier to root for. You're going to root for everybody on the team, whether they stop or not. But, yeah, it's always nice when you see a guy that shows love to the fans. And, yeah, that was uh, his rookie year, that shot right there. And, uh, you know, I saw a guy making plays. And, again, You'd have people kind of giving me crap. Oh, you want Tanner? He's like, dude, you don't watch. You know, wait till the guy gets a chance. And you know, rookie year, uh, Mitchell Trubisky didn't start until like the fifth game. Mike Glennon and you know John Fox and and uh, and uh, uh, I can't remember their offense. Dowell Loggins. You know, they they had trouble kind of figuring out exactly how they wanted to run the offense. But as right. Tanner pointed out, he got opportunity because the roster you know didn't have you know Allen Robinson yet and a few different guys so he got to get his first you know taste of the NFL right away and that had to help his maturation process okay. now that you know he's you know you know like I said a grizzled vet and hopefully he can stick with the bills I imagine there's you know he's got to be able to stick with them with his familiarity with Josh Allen and you know I think a guy like you know we were talking about pre-show a guy like Cole Beasley will be a great person for Tanner yeah. to, you know, mirror to. And that's not to say Tanner is strictly a slot guy. And right. I wouldn't say Cole, you know, Cole's a guy that can do everything too. Yeah, like you know, they said. move those guys around. I was going to ask him a little bit about Cole, you know, just because, you know, I mean, Cole Beasley has been one of the best slot receivers the last couple of years. He's getting a little bit older. I think he's going to be 32 or 33 coming up here in the spring. You know, and he's got to get his, you know, whether it's backing up Cole, you know, for, you know, a half a year until he gets his real shot, you know, whatever that might be. But uh, it sounds like he can play a few of the different spots. And in the modern NFL, as I said, the more you can do, the routes you can run and just get the ball in space, you know, it's it's good for him and it's good for him moving forward. So nice. I'm definitely interested in seeing, you know, what happens, you know, because he already has that built in chemistry with Josh. So it'll be good to see going forward. It's good to see, and Alex Acevedo is happy to see Johnny B, who's always here every week here on Braggs and Stands, giving away his gambling, you know, uh, his gambling, um, you know, um, advice, expertise, and advice. Advice, you, uh, you know, and uh, my loss of words. So yes, I'm excited. We're gonna get into all that stuff here very soon. But before we do that, I gotta hit up my guy, who I always hit up. Right after we do an interview like we just did with Tanner Gentry. And I got to pull up my lines. This is normally when Jake plays the music. 
but our boy Jake is not here. So we're not going to get no music, and that's okay. But, <laughs> no, <laughs> there you, go. you know, one time Fat Mike was on, and he did provide music. It was a little better than that, though. But regardless. Wait a second. That wasn't bad. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> well, regardless, that Tanner Gentry of the Buffalo Bills Interview was brought to you by Fanbags Cornhole, Chicago's official supplier of professional cornhole boards and bags. Choose from any of their officially licensed designs or have my boy Brian design a custom set using anything from a selfie to your company's logo. Visit www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS to get 10% off your entire order. That's www.fanbags.com fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS for 10% off. Step up your game with Fanbags Cornhole. Nice. See, but you got to hit it where I go, step up your game with Fanbags, and then we both got to say Cornhole. Oh. So here we go, Johnny. Step up your game with Fanbags Cornhole. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Pretty good on the uh, promo banner, I thought. I mean, it was well timed. Did it? You did yeah. it. I appreciate it. We we talked about a few things, giving Johnny the controls behind the scenes, <laughs> some of the comments and some of the banners. So if you got something to say, you never know. Maybe Johnny B will pull it up. Uh, you know, we're gonna find out here. Uh, exactly what Johnny B's been up to because I've got some video and some picture to share along. So we're going to kick it off exactly like that before we get into his, you know, some of the gambling stuff and everything else we have covered. But here is my Johnny B for three intro. You know what time it is, Chiefs Kingdom. You know what time it is. Time to punch the clock and run it back. Let's go. Chiefs. Woo. Chiefs all day. Look at that. It's like got me on the wrong side. I had to switch it. Yeah, that was so, weird for a second. You've been on that who side. Who was the person in on the statue of your of your little video there? That is the original founder, one of the founders of the NFL and the inventor of the term Super Bowl. Uh -oh. Lamar Hunt. Lamar Hunt. Because I thought maybe, you know, because Hank Stram, he was a coach for the Chiefs too, right? Yeah, he was a coach. So this is the owner. He was one of the uh, original uh, developers of the AFL. He invented the term Super Bowl based off of the Super Ball uh, that they used to have way back in the day, the ball that bounced so high and it had a cool logo. And that's how he came up with the term Super Bowl. And he was a, had a big part to do with obviously – you know, merging, getting the two sides merged between the you know NFL and the AFL. Because you know Hank Stram is from yeah the region, the region yeah, from right? the area. So you got some Chiefs history lineage from the region, and then you got you know I thought maybe that's who the statue was, so it would have worked out better if it didn't. But you and Abby got to see the AFC championship. This was the week before you sent me some pictures along from your colder trip here in the AFC championship against Tanner Gentry's Buffalo bills. You were holding up uh, this sign. I wish I would have, I heard some people saying on Twitter it was caught on TV. I wish I would have seen it because we could have shared it along on the show. Well, I haven't watched the tape yet, Greg, because a lot has been happening, but I will tell you this, that that sign broke the modern day record for most appearances on the Jumbotron in modern NFL history. Oh my goodness. Some people are saying I was on eight times, some people are saying <laughs> nine. But basically, every time the Chiefs made a play, especially on defense, not always on defense, they zoomed in on me with my screaming honey badger heads, zero <laughs> doubt dog, and I would pump it to the crowd and they were go wild. There you go. You're like I said, you're a man that wears many hats. So you're also a guy that makes badass signs and takes them to the game as a season ticket holder for the Chiefs. So, you know, yeah, I asked you to send some video along. And the first couple you sent me was the intro and then this video. And you got Patrick Mahomes warming up in the end zone. You know, before the game, there was some uncertainty with his toe. And yeah, they that was the that was the the medical report for all my my fans and people that were very interested just to know that the toe is okay. He was dancing. He was having a good time. 
toe, 100% good to go. There you go. Well, I'm happy to hear that because it made for a better football game because, you know, Chad Henney, while he won the fi- the game before, everybody wants to see the best uh, face the best. So we got Patrick Mahomes versus Josh Allen. Then, of course, we all know what happens next, Johnny B. Your team starts to steamroll. The, the Bills looked like a team not re- quite ready for the moment. And, uh, you know, you guys were able to, to really start putting it on him at one point. You shared a couple here. I'll share this video. Let's go, baby. I need it, Patrick. I need it, Big Red. Let's go. I love it. Well, there was some controversy, and you're probably all wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses at night. No, I'm not Corey Hart. (laughs) I'm known for the sunglasses. I actually took the glasses off to see, and we got down 0-9. So I I immediately put the sunglasses back on, and the rest, as you know, was history. There you go. So you're you're not superstitious. You're just a little stitious. Well, I thought my superstitiousness was over after last season and winning the title, but apparently I lied. Uh, I'm superstitious. Uh, any, uh, you know, by all means necessary, whatever it takes. It's only whatever. stupid if it doesn't work. Remember that. That's right. So, you know, that was pretty cool. And you were able to see, you know, uh, that obviously was the touchdown at the other end of the end zone. And I challenged you to get us some video here for Braggs in the stands and uh, because, you know, this is what this show is all about, getting those moments in the stands. And that was a cool little vantage point of you and Abby with the scoreboard behind you. I'll give you props for the creativity. That was a nice. And then I enjoyed, you know, the singing. And, you know, and so you guys play that after every touchdown. I'm yeah, we used to have another song, but I, the guy that did the song got in some trouble with the law. So then we switched the song. <laughs> And they they didn't want to promote the guy's song. So they switched the song and it just never really stuck. And then last, and then last year during the run, we would play, you have a fight for your right to party, you know, just randomly, not after a touchdown necessarily, but in the stadium and it always had a good reception. And then Kelsey, for those of you who watched anything is that he was big on, you got to fight for your right to party. And when he was on the stage, you know, at the uh, AFC Championship and the Super Bowl, and then the parade, it kind of became a thing. And then the Chiefs adopted it. Do you guys South. have a fight song like Bear Down? We got Bear Down, Chicago Bears. Do you guys have a fight song like that? You no, know, I've been I've been going to Kansas City, you know, since I was a kid in the late 1980s. And probably do because those teams. It. That were around back in the day that we, you know, when, you know, all this was getting going, like the Detroit Lions have the worst fight song ever. Oh my God. I heard it last year when I was there for the game, they played it. I was like looking around, like, what is it? Terrible. It's like when you hear Bear Down at Soldier Field, there's few experiences that are more fun at a game because everybody gets into it. And then some of the drunks don't know all the words. So what? Because everybody knows Bear Down, Chicago Bears. Bears, Yeah. that matters and it's a great fight song and really makes you feel you know like you're a part of the football event i'm surprised the chiefs don't have one that they sing i bet you there is a fight song though no. i would challenge you to to research it because i would not be surprised. Yeah, alex here saying red kingdom yeah that that's definitely red kingdom yeah we definitely like that one it's good we got a lot in our hype videos a couple guys that i'm friends with on twitter they make these hype videos they use that sometimes Um, I would say that is an officially unofficial fight song, but a good one. That's a good one. So, like I said, this is a show about being in the stands, capturing the best moments, and you were able to capture one here, and we'll check it out. It's got some sound to it. Super fucking ball! Yeah! 
<laughs> Let me tell you a quick story about my friend there. That's a friend of mine. He actually lives here in the region area, Chicagoland area. And I ran into him randomly about four or five years ago. And he, he said, Chiefs fan, he goes, I'm the biggest Chiefs fan in this area. I said, that's impossible because I am. Anyway, <laughs> we became friends. He didn't go to any of the games last year in the playoffs or Super Bowl because he, he feels he was a cursed fan. <laughs> I told him this year, um, I said, we have Mahomes. There's no such thing as a cursed fan. No, nope, not anymore. So I brought him out to the game with another friend of his that's also a huge Chiefs fan, and he was having the time of his life. <laughs> it looked like it. Yeah, and like it I got to say, it was a good feeling to see him just really take in the moment, you know, and I had a, I was able in my pod to have a little bit extra space because of, of the COVID. Usually I only have two seats, but I had extra this uh, for this game and it was good to, that I could get him and help him and, and experience that with him and Abby and, and then another uh, friend of his that was with us. So man, that was really, really, it. really funny to see him going crazy. Yeah. And, and the, even the, I, I understand it. I'd be, I'd be cursing to, to the heavens. If I, if my team finally was playing like that and what a play too, by Andy Reed, you know, motion, right. All the motion goes right. And, you know, Kelsey, you know, pretending as a blocker and then slips left. There he is wide open for the yeah. end zone touchdown. And it's like, Man, you just as a Bears fan that tries to run this, you know, what watching our team try to run this offense, you just wish they'd be able to do some of the things the Chiefs do. But obviously, you guys have the best parts to the yeah. to the to the right system. Well, the funny thing is with that particular play, as you could even hear my voice in the beginning, I was pretty sure they were gonna run the ball there. Where we were with the score and a field goal was pretty was pretty huge there. A field goal would have even put that game, I thought, out of reach and run a little bit more clock. And then obviously they put Tyreek in motion and just the attention that he gets, and he had busted a couple long ones already. And then it just cleaned that thing whole, you know, that whole side out for Kelsey. And I don't know, man, I just have a knack for when Kelsey's in that part of the end zone in my section, you know, we get him on film and, and he does his thing, man. Zeus, let's go. There you go, man. And uh, really cool to see you had a couple more. This was some of the post game festivities because, you know, the Chiefs blew out the Bills on their way to the Super Bowl. And uh, this was some of the post game festivities. <laughs> That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that was kind of cool. This year, uh, they had the uh, stage for the trophy on the other side of the stadium last year. This year, they brought it to our side. So we did get to kind of have the confetti kind of over us and on us. So that was kind of cool, even though it was a much shorter presentation due to the virus. So that kind of stunk. But it was good to have the confetti flying around us and up in the air by the scoreboard in our section this year. And definitely... You know, it was snowing victories, as we said. It's yeah, snowing. man, that was cool to see the confetti and that player taking it in while the confetti's coming down. And, of course, Andy Reid's famous line of, how about those cheese? <laughs> so I'm happy for you, Johnny. I was rooting for you. I'm not a hater, you know, just because we missed out on Mahomes. I know some Bears fans are certainly salty about it. But, again, you're our guy here at Braggs in the Stands. And for your team to be able to make a second run, for their Super Bowl. I know all the years you had to wait for this, so I'm happy for you. One day, the Bears will have their moment in the sun, but for now, it's Johnny B's time, and this was another really cool video you shared a lot. Oh, There it is. That video was actually shot by Abby. That was uh, she's quite uh, good with the uh, the camera as well. Well, she let me suggest, and I like these shots. You know where they're up and down. You know you've got a couple different ways you can do it. But when you when you do the up and down, you know, like here you got the full screen. When you turn it, it'll show the whole. Like when we show it here on the show, you can put it full screen. But when you turn the phone up, it's a great. Oh. It's a perfect shot. And, you know, I kind of like how it go the video goes in between us when I pull it up. Oh, really it can kind of review it. So I like that aspect of it. But if you turn it sideways, then you get the, 
the full splendor yeah. on the on the video screen. So. Abby, Abby tends to shoot more vertical, you know. I, I used to be strictly vertical when Snapchat first came out, and I was like all about Snapchat, and I liked the filters, and I enjoyed how it promoted using a phone, you know, and filming it vertically. It was like the first time an app really was like, like I said, uh, almost encouraging it, and I enjoyed trying to find cool vantage points from a stand up stand up phone. And now all these years later, because I save all my videos for shows like this and, and showing our cool experiences at the games, I kind of kicked myself a little bit because back then I used all every game. I went to Cubs, you know, high school crown point games, anything I was using the Snapchat vertical and Snapchat doesn't, um, convert as well when you try to transfer the video to other platforms so i'm kicking myself nowadays but just uh, well, you know, a little video I like, thing. I like to go a little bit more with the cinematic you know the the uh, horizontal because i do make some videos like sometimes even if i go on a trip i'll make a video and it'll be more of a cinematic thing. right so like a natural movie screen so i tend to shoot a little bit more that way you know abby definitely does the snapchat and stuff like that she shoots a little bit more vertically but you know you put them all together you mix it up it's still going back to back Super Bowl, baby. Woo! Alex Acevedo's jealous in the chat, and I am too. Uh, of course, my mom is excited for you because we uh, we love you, Johnny B. So we're excited for you. What are your thoughts? I mean, you guys got to see the AFC Championship two years in a row. You've been to the you went to the Super Bowl last year. We always show this picture of you, you know, uh, in your championship lore as the team take as on the field in Miami last year, hoisting the Lombardi trophy. Uh, you know, I know it's a tough one this year. You got Tom Brady and the Bucks playing the Super Bowl for the first time ever at their own home stadium. The host of the Super Bowl will be the home team that resides there. So not only does that make it a tough ticket, but because of coronavirus, COVID-19, you've got limited capacity of the stadium. They did announce an extended amount on the number was extended. Like last week I had shared the tweet with you, uh, Johnny, like I said, you went to the game last year. And like I said, this year, you've already gotten to enjoy the AFC championship splendor. You know, we shared along some of your fun pictures with Abby super bowl bound. So that's the question, Johnny B are you and Abby going to be super bowl bound two years in a row? Or are you, you know, uh, uh, cashing in your chips now, and, and going to enjoy it from the comforts of your home. Well, I did book everything is, except the tickets probably like March or April. When the uh, co the COVID hit and they announced they were going to do 15,000, and then they announced 75 more hundred with the vaccinated healthcare workers, as you said, it looked pretty bleak. I will say it was probably a 10%, and right now I think it's sitting at 40% chance. I've got a couple things I'm working on, a couple connections, the price putting, is, putting some feelers out there. Correct. The prices have started to drop a little bit, you know, at least on the upper level, which is where I did sit last year. And those prices are starting to drop a little. I am seeing some dropping, uh, you know, several thousand dollars drop in the last couple of days. So it went from 10% to 40%. Who knows? What's your cutoff day? Like if tickets came about next, like it, what's your cutoff day? The day before, can you get a flight? And red eye it. The I already have. I already have the flight, and I can cancel it up to two, like two hours before. What day is the flight? Not to, to, not to put out night. your itinerary. What is it? Friday, Friday night? night. So that's basically your cutoff. Or what if, let's say, you go past Friday night and it's Saturday night? Now all of a sudden, someone drops it a crazy number because they're just trying to get rid of it. Are you going to then reconsider? Well, well, that would have to be something that we've talked about. We have talked briefly, uh, not in too much detail yet, sure. uh, possibly going down there for the festivities and just getting some sun and hanging out. Uh, the festivities aren't going to be as good. It's going to be a little bit more limited, but just right. get out of town and get a little sunshine. You know, so if we end up doing that, you know, I could go to, you know, an hour before the game, two hours before the game, because everything is digital this year. So right. That might, we'll that see. might be a way to uh, figure it out. You know, uh, you know, when the one year when it was in Minnesota, it was like 
my buddy was an Eagles fan, like I said, Nick, and he he could re- re- literally wait till like eight ten. It's only an eight hour drive to Minnesota from here, so I was like watching the tickets until like the twelve hour mark for him. So you you know I'm I'm rooting for you to find a way. I know you got your feelers out there. I'd certainly love to see you get back there and be our Super Bowl correspondent for Brags in the stands. You were last year for my podcast show, uh, Shy Fans in the Stands last year, and it was a lot of fun to hear yours and Abby's experiences. Uh, regardless, we're going to hear from you and Abby here next week and the week after, well, you know, and hear about this whole Super Bowl, you know, uh, t- story. You know, I, I'm, I'm excited to hear how the story is written for you guys. Are you nervous? Because, you know, last year you play the 49ers, Seems like a good matchup for you. And now this year, you know, you guys are the favorites in my eyes. You're the reigning yes. Super Bowl champ. You got the reigning MVP. It is at Tampa's house, and they do have the GOAT Tom Brady. And that's where I want to know because with the last Super Bowl, me and you watched Johnny B, you and Abby stopped by for the Patriots um, Falcons Super Bowl. And when the Falcons were up 28 to three, you guys stopped by, you had been to a party and you were stopping through the game had seemed over at that point. And Abby was describing to me her hatred for, for lack of a better word for, of, for Tom Brady. And I was kind of saying at that point, I, I always just want to see a good game, you know, when and, and the same applies for the Super Bowl. I'm rooting for you, Johnny B, but I want it to be a good game. I do not want it to be a blowout. Yeah, I got and, some bad news for you, bro. Well, I know that. But now when going back to the Patriots Falcons Super Bowl, it's 28 to three and the Patriots are starting to make a little noise. And Abby talks about how much she can't stand Tom Brady. Well, and then before the ball, she doesn't like cheaters. Well, That's- and I can understand that. there's a lot of people that hate the Patriots and Tom Brady and their dominance for 20 years. Of course, I've always kind of liked Tom Brady because he was the opposite of Peyton Manning and living in Indiana and having to deal with the anti bears fans that turn Colt fans and the whole Peyton Manning stuff. I always enjoyed Tom Brady taking down t- uh, Peyton Manning. So I was always a Tom Brady fan from that point on. So 28 to three, I'm now rooting for the Patriots to mount the comeback, make this an all time classic Super Bowl, so I can enjoy the game while I enjoy my food and my friends. And of course, here they come. Tom Brady brings them back 28 to three, one of the greatest Super Bowl comebacks in NFL history. And Abby, I'll never forget, Abby was beside herself. She was pissed. And now you guys are facing Tom Brady, you know, and you guys faced Tom Brady in the AFC championship a couple years ago, and he broke your hearts. This was when Patrick Mahomes was learning to become, you know, what he is now in the oh, NFL. D Ford broke our hearts, sir. Well, I'm just saying, yeah, Tom Brady obviously has been in this moment before. He's played all the best. He just took down Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau, throwing dime balls to beat them. I'm talking this up, Johnny, and I know this is a long-winded question, but how? And, and I know you're a confident fan, and maybe I need to get Abby in here because you're always bo- booming with confidence. It, are you or Abby, and maybe Abby can yell in from the other room, are you guys nervous at all? that Tom Brady, the goat is standing on the other side of the sidelines for this Super Bowl. First of all, um, Mahomes is two and two versus Tom Brady and Tom Brady hasn't beaten Mahomes in like 500 days or something like that. We already went into Tampa Bay and destroyed them. They couldn't cover Tyreek Hill and Andy Reid pulled the foot off the gas. Uh, second of all, Tom Brady threw three interceptions last week. If he does that, he's going to lose by 30 points against our defense. Our defense is playing pretty well. If you go look at, you know, the amount of points that we've given up and some of the defenses that we played, we were undefeated on the road this year, uh, playing the Saints, which is a top defense, playing the Dolphins, which is a top defense, at Buffalo, at Baltimore, when they were really good in the beginning of the year. Uh, I speak confidence because confidence is is right in front of me. Um, This is the guy you need to worry about. He said it last year as we played the number one defense in the NFL, and Mahomes made a comeback. Some people say that might have been Mahomes' one of his worst games. Maybe, but he made the plays when he had to, and we came back against the number one defense. This defense for the Buccaneers is not even close to that. This is who you got to watch out for. And he says it best is my sign, zero down. Now, now is he the honey badger? Now, Brent, pull that back up. Is he the honey badger or is he the landlord? Because I've been hearing he's both. 
Okay. Yeah. The more nicknames, the better. I mean, that's what Muhammad Ali, you yeah. know, he had a million nicknames. He's maturing. You know, he's the honey badger when he's young, and now he's got experience. He's got the hardware. He's got the ring. So he collects the rent. The rent is due. That's why they call him the landlord. Okay. All right. Good to know. I feel good. I feel good. I've In years past, you know, I've, I've been a little bit skeptical, you know, I'm not going to lie. Um, but this last week we said, I said uh, 45 to 20. It was 38, 24 after we gave them nine. I mean, I was pretty close. And we, we kind of, you know, obviously down the ball at the end, didn't try to score. Um, I'm very confident. Uh, it is Tom Brady. Uh, I think it, it'll be a good game for a while, but I think it'll be two possession victory for the Chiefs. Okay, we shall see. It'll be exciting. You know, I put this tweet out after the Tom Brady took down uh, the Packers, which was a beautiful thing for us Bears fans. And it was how many times has Aaron Rodgers lost in the NFC Championship game? And that would be four times, as you can see, Tom Brady holding up the hands from the Bears game where the Bears beat Tom Brady and the Bucks this year. So that makes us NFC champs in my eyes. Uh, so oh, that's all I need. Used to say the same stuff when we beat the Seahawks in the in the uh the Seahawks after they won it and then we beat the Eagles the year they won it. I used to uh -huh. say the same stuff, Greg. You're well on your way to Super Bowl glory. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Me and my guys. Black and Abdallah. Love those guys. Shout out to Black and Abdallah. Can't can't get enough of those guys. My guy Black. He was picking on me a little more the other day. Uh so you know, uh, you know, another thing we got to think about too when it comes to this game, because I am excited for you, uh, you know, is all the bets. You know, uh, you're the gambling aficionado here at Braggs in the stands and there were a few prop bets I wanted to, you know, talk about. You know, I, I, you know, we didn't, we don't have any games, NFL games for Johnny B to give away any, any kind of picks for you to make some money, but we can take a look at some of these prop bets, uh, for the upcoming Super Bowl and some that, you know, early on, you know, and we'll next week maybe cover some more as we get closer and have a better idea of what, how we want to push our money around for the big game. And I got to tell you, Johnny B, before we get into some of these prop bets, uh, I was over at Nick Henderson's house and I can't remember if it was for this game or the game prior was it was the game prior where Patrick Mahomes had the opening rush for the touchdown. That was, right. That was, yeah. That yeah. was two games ago. That the was, divisional yeah. round. Correct. Yeah. Versus Cleveland. That was versus the Cleveland. I'm over at Nick Henderson's house and remember on the Super Bowl with Adam and Eric sitting at my house while you were at the game last year, uh, we were all kind of joking around about some prop bets and they had plus 2000 for Patrick Mahomes first score of the game. And, it, and he had had a few rushing touchdowns that season. So we started kind of conjuring up our reasoning of why we should put that down. And we did sure enough, me and Adam hit and we made ourselves a couple hundred bucks each just on, you know, a, a whim pick and same thing happens. I'm sitting over at Nick Henderson's. We're watching the Purdue basketball game. They'd taken down Penn state that game. And here comes the start of the chiefs game. Now I'm feeling good. Purdue won. And I'm like, Hey, uh, Nick, throw down some money on uh, Patrick Mahomes first first score of the game. I go, they're going to drive all the way down. They're going to get a pass interference in the end zone, or they're going to get on the goal line, and then they're going to run the jet sweep option, and Mahomes is going to walk it in. And each play as they're going down the field, I'm just speaking this into existence. I'm just like the Super Bowl because I know it's coming. And the Chiefs, boom, 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 they're going down the field. Sure enough. He walks his butt right into the end zone, and I made all of the money that Nick had gambled on for that day. I got him even before even the rest of his picks had even right. happened. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the gift that keeps on giving. So, um, you know, again, like I said, we had some prop backs that Johnny was nice enough to go over that caught his eye. You know, we're still a week away from a little over a week, you know, almost 10 days away from the Super Bowl. So I'll pull these up and we can go through these and Johnny B can yeah. kind of give his synopsis on what he thinks here. This is just tells you how ridiculous that some of these profits have, have gotten. Like you can literally pick the coin toss heads or tails. And they do that description now of the coins because they had the confusion a couple of times with what's heads and what's tails and then flipping it and whatever. But yeah, you can actually pick a heads or tails if you want to put a 
a hundred bucks on the coin toss to try to get it started on a 50 50 i mean i'm not gonna do it but this tells you where these bets can go anything from the coin toss to a player bet so i thought that was kind of interesting Sorry. yeah that was and then we had uh uh this one too what are your thoughts here with the convert actually i was surprised that this was plus 230 um obviously you know teams get behind or whatever the case may be and you know, there's a little bit more of the two-point conversion going on. It seems like every year there's different strategies to it. At plus 230, I actually think this is a real good bet. Obviously, you have to convert it to, which makes it a little bit trickier. It's not just going for two. But I like this one at 230. I think I might put a little down on this one. All right, all right. I feel you there. And now uh, you got Mahomes over 325. I, I already know what you're going to say when it comes to this prop. Well, if you're winning, it's over 325. And if you're losing, it's probably over 450. Absolutely. I mean, you know he's you know he's good for 325. I mean, it's almost silly at this point, the way they move the ball. I, I mean, mean even if they struggle for a half, they're capable of that kind of numbers in and well, let's, second. Let's not forget when we played the Bucks, when the Chiefs played the Bucks earlier this year, I think Tyreek, I know he had over 200 yards receiving in one quarter versus these Bucks. Mm -hmm. So three, 325 seems silly. One yeah. guy got 270 or whatever for the game. And sure. then that's not even counting Kelsey or any of the other guys. No, I, I, I see what you're saying there. So now we're going to move on to uh, Cameron Brait. Anytime touchdown. Yeah, plus is, 260. You know, this, he's made some dust. He's caught quite a few touchdowns from Tom Brady. He's kind of like under the radar a little bit. But Tom I, loves him. I've yeah. heard that all year. Yeah, but at plus 260, anytime touchdown, you know, if they do get behind, which I think they get, they're going to do, they're obviously going to be passing. You know, uh, Brate's a little bit faster, obviously, than Gronk to get down the field. And Gronk, you know, hasn't had a ton, ton of catches this year. No, you like how they slipped him in there uh, at a pivotal moment in the game. Yeah. They faked the screen one way, and then all of a sudden Gronk slips open on the right, gets himself like 35 yards. It was a pivotal moment right. in that game for the Bucks, <clears throat> And I feel like that's what they're going to have to do in the Super Bowl for Gronk pick and choose their spots, but yeah, I, I, I have a feeling Gronk's going to make his presence felt, but yeah, Cameron Brate's not to be slept on because I can remember earlier in the season, you know, the bears played them and um, they, you know, they have OJ Howard, they have Rob Gronkowski, and he was still saying how they needed to get Cameron Brate the ball. So I like your uh, Cameron Brate anytime touchdown uh, thoughts there. So why don't you talk about this next one? And we got, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, a big fantasy football darling to start yeah, the year. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's finally healthy. I think I just saw in the injury report today that he doesn't have a designation finally for this game. Uh, I just feel like he's going to have a big game, and I think that this touchdown might be a receiving touchdown. But, uh, again, it's plus odds. I tried to, to pull up some that I liked for this uh, segment that had, you know, a few of them that had plus odds. And, I think, as I call them, the Bayou bowling ball is going to be tough to tackle, and I think that bet is a strike all day. All day long. So, again, we've got uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire anytime touchdown. What's we went over the coin yeah, toss. Plus, yeah, plus 150 on that Clyde Edwards. So. Oh, okay. I apologize. I must have deleted that, you know, putting it up. But, uh, yeah, we got we got the coin toss heads or tails, and then we've got – the either team two point conversion, Mahomes three twenty five yards. Is that stealing? I mean, this bet here is like actually stealing. This should be a felony. So, how much do you put down then, Johnny? I mean, I come don't on. Like to talk the numbers. You oh, know. I see. You put down you what never, you can. You never know who's listening, and I like to say bet. Then <laughs> the Cameron Braid anytime touchdown plus two sixty. Uh, yeah, I'm. I definitely am going to get into it. Last year, I won myself some easy money on the Super Bowl and your Chiefs. So, I think I'm going to de delve back into that this year for the Super Bowl. I mean, heck. Why not? Like I said, we we pulled it off in the divisional round, so uh, that's that's what it's all about. Gotta gotta try it, you know. I don't know. Did you did you notice those uh, fan videos? I know you guys took down the Bills, but how about these videos? I gotta I'll share this one with sound because it is incredible. <laughs>
<laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Bill's Mafia. They're pretty crazy. You know, they do all this stuff with like. I got to get up there sometime. Yeah, the wrestling move and things like that. We've been up there a little bit and we saw a little bit of that, but I don't know, man. We didn't see the catch up. <laughs> the mustard guy. Yeah. Like, this is. I know they, they're known for the table smashing. Yeah. I have that video too. But this just stood out to me. I was like, yeah. wow. I, you know, I, I'm friends with the Chicago Bear. You know, I'm, uh, you know, the Chicago Bears tailgating club people, you know, you got to experience those. And this is, they were hanging out with the, or the the Detroit Lions fans, because you can see some of the fans in the background are Detroit Lions fans. Right. The people that come for the Chicago Bears tail, tailgating club when the Lions are in town, these people were at the Bills game, and this is their video. And uh, it's almost like, you know, uh, you know, just all the different traditions and craziness. Obviously, it looks like that's something they do each time. Why? Who knows? But why not? Why, why ask why when you can ask how? Well, I think this is the best description of that video. Like you said, like LOL, like, oh, what, yeah. What does that even mean? Like, and Mantra is saying he's putting his life savings down on Mahomes uh, plus uh, 325. You know, I mean, hey, well, I, I hope that he listened to my bets last week because if he did, it would have been an undefeated week for him. You so. got to think, and you don't, you hate talking even injury, but that's literally the only thing that's holding him back from that number. And then, of course, here's our guy Chubbs late because he's watching Illinois. Barely beating Iowa 14 to 13, Johnny B. And he's over here throwing the ticker tape parade for his fighting Illini who are going to have their hands full all night with Luca Garza and the Iowa Hawkeyes. So, you know, good luck with that uh, uh, chest pounding Chubbs 82 because you're going to be uh, you're going to be fighting a tough battle tonight and it's at home. So there's no excuses for the fighting line nights at home. I don't want to hear it. Iowa a couple weeks ago on a parlay, and they were playing somebody not as good as a line night, and they definitely choked. Uh, well, just as Chubbs we'll gets into the chat because he's talking his crap, you know, sorry because he's watching I Illinois beating Iowa. Just as he says that, Iowa goes on a 4-0 run, and they now lead 18-14 to early in the first half of that game that I'll definitely be keeping my eye on because the big 10 is a lot of fun this year. You know, last week we were talking a little bit about how Purdue has been rolling Johnny. And then of course our guy, as you see over my shoulder, Sasha Stefanovic, the league leader in the big 10 in three point percentage, one of the most cold blooded shooters in all of college basketball, unfortunately comes across this coronavirus COVID-19 nightmare that we've been, you know, uh, having to deal with for almost a year now. And it hit uh, Purdue's doorsteps. And apparently Sasha had gotten it at some point in the trip to Ohio State when they won their big game. And Sasha had some big shots in that game. And unfortunately, he's put on the 17-day you know, list where he has to wait it out and then be right. cleared before he can play again. So Purdue has to play three games now without one of their best shooters, one of their best leaders. So it's going to be interesting. And yes, I, of course, Montre guy, he's in the chat from YouTube and he also friended me on Facebook's, but this is Trey tunes, uh, Johnny B and you're going to get to know Trey tunes here coming up. Uh, he has his own Twitch show, uh, which I was calling into yesterday and we were chopping it up for like 25 minutes. Trey is really good with music nice. and uh, he almost won the parody contest for the Waddle and Sylvie show. And uh, he's going to be joining Braggs in the stands in, uh, in, in not too long, maybe even next week. So you're going to get to know Trey here nice. real soon. Uh, yeah. He friended me the other day. I was like, my Trey guy, who's this? And then of course it's my guy, Trey Toon. So that's the name with the face. Uh uh, like I said, you're going to get to know him and, uh, we got, thank you Chubbs for giving us your Illinois, Iowa updates. And, uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be happy to pull them up as we go to finish up this show, but this is not a show talking about Illinois basketball tonight, unfortunately, but we will get to that Chubbs. Don't you worry? Cause I know your boys are going to make the tournament. The only question is, Will my boys. And if they don't, then I'm never talking about college basketball again until next year. So I was gonna uh, say that is a lie. So yeah, whatever. You know, this is Chubbs. This is Chubbs. He comes into the chat, he just shows up, he's late, and now listen, this is the crap I gotta deal with. But that's all right. I enjoy people holding me in check here. And Johnny, you know, before we jet on out of here, I do have a couple things for top shots, but you know, really. This this Deshaun Watson news has is my top shot because 
You know, we you, we started the show with Danny Parkins' rant, and for those of you that didn't get to see it, I played it to start the show. It was a Danny Parkins letter to Deshaun Watson pleading with him to come to the Chicago Bears and what a great fit he would be. Johnny B, do you think there's any chance at all? You know, we saw the uh, the, the tweets from Ian Rappaport yesterday that kind of made everything go crazy for all these teams that are quarterback thirsty and certainly the Chicago Bears fans are. You see Deshaun Watson has requested a trade. He has a no trade clause. So now the ball's kind of in his court. You know, today Houston had their um, – their opening interviews with their new GM and head coach. And they said, you know, they have no interest in trading him, even though Houston is known for a few weeks that Watson has wanted out teams have been calling, but Houston is trying to hold serve. Do you think I'm, you know, uh, living a pipe dream here, or do you think there's any chance at all that the bears could sneak in the back door and make this a reality? Well, let's just first of all state that a few of the things that were said in that video that you played, I had actually been talking with some friends uh, recently. Now, here's the the one thing that could sidetrack it is, do the Bears have enough to make this happen right now? That's the first problem. But I will say this, as far as him wanting to come to Chicago, I mean, Nagy definitely said, you know, that, that he liked Watson, obviously, Mahomes. I know a lot of your listeners and a lot of Bears fans thought when they draft, when they moved up in the draft that they were going to take Watson. That seemed to be the logical choice with moving up in the draft with fear somebody might scoop in ahead of them. And I will say this, Chicago is a city. It's got a lot of marketability. There's a lot of opportunity off the field and a lot of different things, you know, as far as what you might want to do off the field as well for as far as charities and awareness and, and, yep. and whatever. But this is the one thing where I think Bears have a chance if they have enough to do it. He is immediately, like you said in the video, going to have a chance to break every Bears record passing and be the greatest quarterback in the history of the Bears franchise. And that is appealing. Whether they passed on him or not, you have the chance to write record books and your legacy – in a city that is definitely starving for a quarterback. And I think that's appealing. I think that would be appealing to, to the Watson. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I know he's a big MJ fan. I'm trying to connect all these loose dots. He followed the Chicago weather people. So to me, I think he would put us on his list of teams that he would waive his no trade clause for. So that we did get in the Derby, then what would you be willing to trade? If you put on your bears, fan cap on or your bears GM cap on how much is too much? Because the word on the street is you can only offer them three first round picks right now, but the day of the draft, you can offer them four first round picks the The day of the draft. For me, if I was the GM of the bears, if I'm Ryan pace, I've already called or emailed the Texans and telling them, look, whatever you decide night of the draft, I'll give you four picks four first round picks for Deshaun Watson. That's where I start. And if they tell me they have a better offer, I throw in two second round picks. If or if they want Roquan Smith or if they want Khalil Mack. Yeah. I am literally telling them whatever offer any team gives you, come back to me and let me see if I can top it. Am I crazy for saying that? No, you're not. What what I'm kind of feeling, and a lot of people say I'm nuts, but maybe I am, maybe I'm not, is I'm feeling three first-round picks, Mac and Eddie Jackson, dude. Yeah, I mean. And maybe it, even having to throw in somebody else, you know. You know so maybe I don't know if they want Mac because, he, you know, they already have J.J. Watt and Mac. You know, not to say he's not a great player, but he's not. I, would you say he's in the prime of his career? I don't know if that's already passed or not. He's certainly a dominant player, but then you, you he's know, Lovey, Lovey, Lovey Smith just got signed there as their defensive coordinator. And we all know his Tampa two defense here in Chicago. Would he be interested in a guy like Roquan Smith as his middle linebacker, you know, running that offense like Brian Erlocker did? I think that's something that could definitely be entertained. Yeah. You got to think though, that if JJ Watt is there, that that's going to, that's definitely going to free up Mac a little bit too. Obviously it's a little bit different situation. <laughs> Chubbs hates hearing all my different trade theories that I will give <laughs> well, to the Texans because I'm willing to give up everything. And I know there's some people that are vehemently against that for me personally, I'm figuring out my quarterback 
and then figuring out the rest once I got him. And if whatever whatever the Texans need to get him, hey, hopefully it's only three first round picks, and then I don't have to give up the rest of the stuff. Or hopefully it's only two first round picks and and Roquan Smith. I would do that if that's what they're going to take. But unfortunately for the Bears, they made the playoffs in the back door. They won a little more, few more games, and maybe they could have if they had just lost out at five. Uh, five and 11, like some bears had wanted. And now we're fighting against teams that also want Deshaun Watson that are sitting in the top five, you know, of the draft where now the Texans can make a trade like that and go get their quarterback of the future. Or even in, in a case like the dolphins make a trade and get to a Tunga Viola, however you pronounce it, but we I don't know Tua. Tua from of course, uh, university of Alabama. We don't know exactly how, you know, they feel about Tua, that being the Texans. So, you know, I think there's a lot to unfold here. I think the Texans are going to play hardball with Deshaun, and I'm hoping maybe that's another element that helps the Bears because maybe they do a long standoff where other teams can't wait around for Deshaun to decide or the Texans to decide what they're going to do. And then the bears can kind of just sit back and, and let that play out. And maybe they're one of the few teams still in a position to make a move like that. You know, I think any team would want Deshaun Watson. I know, uh, you know, I understand people that see it the other way, but to me, it's the same situation as Jay Cutler. And I back then was saying, I'd give up five first round picks for Jay Cutler. Why? Two reasons. One, we needed a quarterback and we were a win now team. Two, we never got our first round picks right back then. And so I could have cared less who our first round picks if we gave them up because every year it was Chris Williams, Gabe Karimi, and it's, uh, every player would either get hurt or would be a bust. And really in the last five years, you know, Leonard Floyd has looked good for the Rams this year, but he didn't look great for the Bears when he was in a Bears uniform. Roquan Smith has been a good pick, but then some of these other first round picks, Kevin White, obviously Mitchell Trubisky didn't work out. You, you know, I I don't give crap. I maybe I understand people that 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 value draft equity and yes, if we had a GM that was more consistent and I understand it's not easy to be consistent in drafts, but regardless, I just I'm not worried about an uncertain thing when I know that Deshaun Watson is a generational talent and very few generational talent quarterbacks become available at the age of 26. He is much better than Jay Cutler was. And we traded for him at the age of 26 as Shane Marsaw from the tape never lies network pointed out to me. And so, like I said, I'm willing to push all my chips in for Deshaun Watson. You got guys like Alan Robinson messing with us. Uh, uh, there I got, I almost deleted the overlay, but yeah, it's a only time will tell wink face. Like, Alan, don't me- don't play with my emotions, man. I'm dying well, over that here. That could mean for him. I mean, that might not have yeah. nothing to do with Deshaun. That's what I mean. Who knows? Yeah. Like, how do you play the Twitter de- decipher machine? Because is it only time will tell and and uh and he'll be out, or is he mean no. I when this, when he tweeted that at 9 18 a.m. It was right when Deshaun Watson had announced that he or that it was he had re- officially requested a trade. So well, a lot to of me, that says too. he thinks that maybe he could become a bear. I don't know. A lot of people, though, in the Chicago, you know, fan base are also, and I and I've seen it quite a little bit on Twitter and some of the other, you know, outlets, is that they're thinking that he's quitting on his team. And I know Chubbs has said this a couple times, but I've seen it from a lot of other Bears fans as well. They just, um, it's one thing to, you know, ask for a trade, but a lot of teams think that that he just is giving up on his team. I mean, they just gave him a truckload of money, you know, and now he's all of a sudden saying he wants it out. So there's a lot of people that are kind of a little bit, you know, rubbed the wrong way by that. Like, is this guy just like, you know, a lot of people nowadays that just don't get their way and, you know, they didn't ask me to write questions and now he's, you know, a hissy fit and wants out of town. You know, a lot of people don't really like that. Yeah, but at the same time, the Texans have made some pretty bad moves here the last couple of years that have directly affected Deshaun Watson's career. You saw at the end of the the season in the hot mic, J.J. Watt apologizing to Deshaun Watson for wasting another year yeah. of his talents. And they're certainly not wasting Patrick Mahomes' talents in Kansas City. And uh, to me – he wants out for the right reasons. You know, he's, he's, and now they have a whole new regiment coming in and 
I, you know, they brought they brought in a new GM and head coach. I I see no reason why him saying I want to have a clean slate and a different organization. He's he's not beholden to the Bears. I mean, look at how the or to the Texans. This is a you know this is a business. Look at how the Bears are saying bye bye to Mitchell Trubisky. This isn't a you know loyalty is important, but you know I I don't blame Deshaun Watson for requesting to uh you know be out now. Now, if the Texans play hardball and this goes all the way into next year and he sits out during games while he's being paid, that's a different discussion. But, you know, we see this kind of stuff in the NBA all the time. You know, we see players, you know, force their way into trades. James Harden, who's also from Houston, did this exact thing. Although I feel like James did it a little differently where he was more of the antithesis behind it, where I think the Texans are the catalyst behind Deshaun Watson and wanting to leave. I think Deshaun Watson loved playing in Houston. And then all of a sudden they shipped DeAndre Hopkins out for nothing. You know, the, 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 the trade they got in return, it's a joke. Yeah. And they did the same thing with, a, uh, when they acquired the, the left tackle, you know, so I, 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 Tunzel. yeah, tons So I don't, you know, I don't begrudge what he's trying to do there. To me, it's a question of how much we're willing to give up as uh, for the bears. And I think if you're Ryan Pace, you're trying to right that wrong. You're trying to make this, like I've said a million tr- times, we're trying to make this picture, you know, become something that isn't a thorn in Bears fan side. And it's like this ironic picture that's like, whoa, can you believe that we went from Mitch to, to Watson? And, you know, for me, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a guy like Matt Nagy figure that out. You know, you know, these guys, I personally would have had both these guys run out of town with Mitchell Trubisky, but they're getting a second chance. And however they got to figure it out, I'm rooting for that to happen. You know, even if that goes against what I would have done personally as a GM, because who gives a shit what I would have done personally? That's just, I mean, that's it. So we're going to find out what happens. We're all in the prayer circle. Everybody get your, get your hands into the prayer circle. And, and, and we're going to get our seance for Deshaun Watson. Chubbs won't join us for the seance and that's fine. You know, and then another thing I saw, you know, just the Windy City Productions who puts out great hype videos, uh, you know, on Twitter all the time. And he's got a great YouTube channel for it as well. Great Bears fan. Uh, they were putting together this uh, uh, foundation cause. You know how we yeah. do that, a lot of that kind of stuff here at Braggs in the Stands. And I thought this was a great idea. And there was the tweet. Make sure you follow the, the Windy City Productions, and, and this is a little more blown up picture of exactly what you can do. And you donate four dollars to the Desha- Deshaun Watson's Foundation, you know, for being his number, obviously. And uh, we're doing it on the fourth. Apparently, all these Bears fans are going to do it, and that's going to kind of give a little wink nod to our guy Deshaun Watson, and maybe then maybe that'll convince him. You know, there he is whispering to Matt Nagy, "Let me come to Chicago." Come get me, please. <laughs> Let me play in the city that Michael Jordan built. That's what I'm saying. He's a Jordan fan. That's my favorite connection. You know, uh, you know, uh, once when the bit when the Bulls pitched to LeBron James to come play in Chicago when he was trying to decide where he was going to jettison to, they put this sales pitch to him where they had Jordan's uh, first ever Jordans, the Jordan ones. And they put them in a nice box. And when you opened up, when LeBron opened up the box, it said on this platelet, want to fill these shoes. And uh, I thought what a cool way to, you know, uh, you know, an homage to Jordan, to LeBron, a great sales pitch. And apparently from what I've heard, he wasn't, I don't know if he loved that or not. Some people say he didn't. And, um, you know, that was the little, uh, secret, uh, you know, sales pitch, I guess they gave him uh, allegedly. And I was putting that same tweet to Deshaun Watson because I know he's a big Jordan fan. I, you know, obviously I grew up, I'm from, I, I grew up on the school of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. So, you know, I appreciate that he, 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 he's got that Jordan mentality. Okay. Chubbs, you want Dak Prescott. That's <laughs> fine. Once Deshaun Watson's off the table, then I'll move on to Dak Prescott and Matt Stafford. I don't know what those guys are going to do. I'm happy that it's a, a, you know, as Adam Schefter said on Waddle and Sylvie, it's going to be a, a lot of movement in the quarterback market. I think that favors the Bears. So there are a lot of different avenues they can go here. But 
I got my eyes on Deshaun Watson. So you can have your eyes on the rest of the people. I got my eyes on Deshaun Watson over here. And Braxton says, I don't know what to tell him, Bear Truth 9. I know he's really, really excited. He's finally got in the chat. Illinois is tied up with Iowa, 28-28, and he's given me a lesson on Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I know. I know Michael never quit on his team. Thank you very much. Uh, you, I'll never forget it. It was the greatest years of my life. Unfortunately, it was my childhood, and now I'm an old man, and I have to deal with nothing but crappy sports teams while my guy Johnny B gets to live championship glory in my face every freaking day, going to AFC championships, going to Super Bowls, living the dream while I'm scratching and clawing for freaking peanuts, getting excited about stupid stuff. I mean, I had, just, I had a friend ask me about this weekend, and they said, did you have a good time? I said, yeah, I did. I said, I ate barbecue, I gambled, I made money, and we kicked the buffalo tail. Oh I said, God. I had a fantastic time. You guys should all try it. Good luck. Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, maybe a little Fitz Magic. How about that, Greg? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can't handle you. Can't handle you, Johnny B. Uh here, we'll check out the other one. We got the other one of the, the Bills fans. These Bills fans, they did. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Don't do it. Who is this man? Who is this man? Oh no. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> Could you imagine what they had done if they had taken down, if they had slayed the Mahomes dragon? They, Buffalo might not be standing, honestly. Uh, you got to love those guys. You know, I know they lost and you, you guys had to beat them down, but. Uh, they're they're a great fan base. They do a lot of fun charitable work, so I appreciate the Bills fans. You know they are they're crazy. Matt Nagy's in the chat. We appreciate you joining us, Matt. Uh, you know we apologize for any slander, Matt Nagy slander here tonight, but we got to speak the truth. As Bear Truth Nine is in the chat, uh, you know as we've been talking about it, I give it a I give it a fifty fifty shot. You know, yeah. I'm an optimist, so I'm going up to 50, all right? Okay. Because, you know why? Uh, to me, the Bears are the most desperate team, the team that needs this more than anybody. I know everybody needs a great quarterback. Everybody needs a generational talent quarterback. But which ones are willing? Like, Brian Pace loves to trade up. Ryan Pace loves to give up draft equity. These other teams, are they going to be willing to do what maybe Ryan Pace is willing to do here? I don't know. Yeah. And to me, I think, uh, you know, well, and we don't know if the Jets will be on Watson's well, list. Let me if tell you believe you know, what Adam Schefter says. He says no. So I don't, anybody that cannot get up and Lambo leap. No, first of all, I don't believe him. He got off two inches off the ground. Second of all, who, 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 who? Schefter, when he tried to Lambo leap. Okay. Second of all. When the new coach Sala, is that how you say his name? Of the Robert uh, Sala, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. When he immediately comes out and says, "Blah blah blah," Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold. I think he's bluffing immediately. I'm pushing my chips all in. I think he's full of crap. I think the Jets will be players on Deshaun Watson, and I'll say the Jets are fifty fifty, and the Bears are six percent. Well, that's stupid. I got the Bears way higher than that. I got the Bears at fifty. Because he loves Chicago. To me, it's all about your brand. And his brand could not be any bigger. I mean, most athletes, when you're at that echelon, it is about their brand. And his brand could not be bigger than any other place. New York is a, a, a huge city, obviously. You know, uh, you know, brings a lot to the table. But they have two football teams in that town. Chicago, you're the only show in town. This is a football city. And, you know, obviously... We treat our superstars like royalty. Look at the 85 Bears. So I think, you know, as Danny Parkin said, here, you know, for the people that didn't see it, that are still tuned in here, I'll let Danny Parkins explain what I've been trying to say to Joe. Sean, 
I've been following you ever since you threw your first pass at Clemson replacing Cole Stout. I remember the six touchdowns in your first college start, and it was in the stands for the title game against Bama when they had the onside kick to keep you from getting back on the field. My wife went to Clemson, so I watched every game, and I've known you were going to be great since that first year. I wanted the Bears to draft you in 2017, and when they traded up, I was positive your name was going to be the one called. But this isn't about me. I'm a Chicagoan, and I want to implore you to consider the Bears when, frankly, they haven't done much to deserve it. This is a football town second to none. The legendary 85 Bears, this city's last Super Bowl champion, still treated like royalty to this day. But you would give this city something it's never had. Something not even that all-time team could provide, a star quarterback. The Bears have never had a quarterback throw for 4,000 yards. You've done that in two of your three full seasons. The Bears have never had a quarterback throw for 30 touchdowns. You eclipsed that total with ease last year. The second you became a Bear, you'd be the best quarterback in the history of this city. Don't worry about the cold. That doesn't stop the best from lighting up the scoreboard. Don't worry about them not meeting with you in the past. Matt Nagy's in charge now. Ask your buddy Pat Mahomes about him. He'll tell you he isn't the problem here. In fact, he once said, Nagy was great with me in my transition to the NFL. Being able to relate to me, being able to let me go out there and play fast and be who I am. Also, I know all about your charity work and how you've helped your mom and the people in your inner circle your whole life. The city respects that and is always looking for people of influence to help out. There's plenty of work to be done here, and you can make a meaningful difference in a city that needs it. Chicago would never take you for granted. You'd have the coach, the city, and a shot at sports immortality. Your old coach Dabo Sweeney said before the draft that passing on you would be like passing on Michael Jordan. Well, we reaped the benefit of a team passing on MJ once upon a time and parlayed that into the greatest team in the history of sports. The Bears made the mistake of passing on you once, but if you let them correct that mistake... You'd own this city like Jordan in the 90s, and if you bring this town a Super Bowl, you'll reach a stratosphere that only guys named Michael and Walter ever have in Chicago. At least think about it. You see, for my money, Chicago is the best city in the world. It's got everything except a quarterback. How about them Bears? How about them Bears, Deshaun Watson? Come on, baby. Come to Chicago. Put Chicago as the only team on your no trade. You're going to wipe away list. Everybody else can kick rocks because I want to play in Chicago. And if not, let Chicago be on the list. Do it for Braggs. Do it for Braggs. Do it for Braggs. Do it for Braggs. As Tanner Gentry said, I'll be in your corner. Ten toes down. Always hyping you up, Deshaun. Come to Chicago. Don't listen to Chubbs. Don't read his tweets. He'll love you once he gets once you get here. Said, Greg, he said if they did it right, he would have drafted Watson. There it Me is. Too. Right. I, I would have too. I mean, it was the it was the it was the obvious move when they traded up, as Danny Parkin said. It was like, who else were they gonna take? Oh, but other than Deshaun Watson, they needed a quarterback. You're trading up into you know from three to two. You're obviously trying to get a quarterback there. And you don't take the one that won in the national championship two years in a row over Alabama on the biggest stage. He showed you everything that you needed to see. Maybe the injury thing was a reason behind, you know, there was injury concern. He had a couple knee injuries, but to me, it was a no brainer, especially when you're the Chicago bears who have never been that high in the draft. We're always picking 14, 15, 16, ending up with guys like Kyle Fuller who are fine players, but we needed that generational changer player. And what's the most frustrating part is the word is that Ryan Pace had Patrick Mahomes, not Deshaun Watson, number two on his list. So he saw what people saw. Everyone else knew that Patrick Mahomes had talent, but no one had the courage to draft him at two. But they had the courage to draft Mitchell Trubisky, a project who had only played one year at UNC. And all these scouts and everybody was you know in agreement that that was the right pick so it's revisionist history there was a lot of people that could have potentially gotten that move wrong but at the end of the day it was ryan that did and not only was there one guy he could have had that got it wrong there was two different guys so it makes it even harder and to me if you have a chance to write that wrong 
Yes, you could have already had him with the fourth pick. You wouldn't have to give up anything, but I don't care. I, I'm a bricklayer, okay? So when we build a house, there's two people out there. There's the bricklayers and then the homeowner. The homeowners are complaining about everything as the house goes up. Well, not all of them, but so, there's some type of homeowners that'll complain as the process is going. Like, well, how are you going to do this? What's going to happen here? Oh, no, this isn't how we wanted it. Now we have to change something. You know, when a wall is not right, you got to tear it down and rebuild it again. I'm a solution guy. I don't like to talk about the problems. Tell me how we solve it. How do we build the, you know, when, when we're building the house brick by brick, you just, when the problems come at you, you solve them and then you move on to the next brick. And so for me, the next brick is quarterback. I want the best one on the market and that's the Sean Watson. And then you build this house brick by brick, bear truth nine. And that is how you build a solid house. We've got it. I, 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 that's what I would like to do. We'll see what happens. I know it's a long shot, but Hey, people said the bears uh, weren't going to get Khalil Mack. The, Jay Cutler, when he was being whispered in trades, I did think that, you know, there were people that were saying that it might not happen. And then all of a sudden the bears got him. So you never know. I know there's some teams that are in better standing as far as ec- draft equity. And, um, but I just don't know if they are as much mo- like if you're the dolphins, and you have a top five pick, are you going to give them three first round picks? Or are you going to say, no, you're only getting two and Tua? Well, what if the Bears say, well, I'll get, I know we're sitting at 20, but I'll give you four on the night of the draft and I'll give you Jalen Johnson. You know, that might make the Texans think twice like, oh, well, maybe we can pick up a veteran quarterback that isn't, you know, a, a guy that is still coming up or whatever, like a Tua. Maybe we go get Matt Stafford. And then we use all this draft equity to build the rest of the team. I don't freaking know. I'm just telling you that the Bears need to be exhausting every avenue on the email chain, on the text line, on the call line to the Houston Texans, making sure they know that we're willing to do whatever it takes. Because I that's what I hope. I hope Brian Pace is that smart. Is this the one move they can make to me that I'm not going to be sitting back like, all right, let's see what happens. If they get to Sean Watson and it doesn't go right, I'm not going to be the one to kick uh, sand in their face. I will I will give them credit for making the move that they made, and I won't look back. If they if it fails, so be it. There will be some guys that want to play the oh, yeah. I told you so stuff. Yeah. You're always going to have that. But to me, Deshaun Watson's the one that I personally won't sit back and saw, say, well, you could have done this, that, or the other, and then it could have worked. No. Go ahead. And get yourself to Sean Watson, despite what Chubbs is saying. And I know you're messing with me uh, as Illinois takes the lead at 38-36 with 224 to go in the first half. A uh, battle that we're going to get to see, you know, as we wrap up Braggs and Stance, I'll get to enjoy the second half as Chubbs sweats it out. Purdue's got Minnesota tomorrow night as Luca Garza hits a three to take the lead. Purdue's got Minnesota tomorrow night, and that's the second of three games that they don't have with Sasha Stefanovic, who's out with coronavirus. So Purdue needs to win one of these next two games without them so they can really have that good standing because they, they're they they're like right in the thick of it of the Big Ten standing. So I'm excited for it. And, Johnny, you got to get into it a little more because I want you to start getting in the, the, the basketball beat as far as picks because I know, you know, with March Madness, yeah. people love to get in on that stuff. And I know basketball is a little trickier to get all of them right. And I know you're the football is your sweet spot, but we're going to branch out as we get into basketball, baseball, and golf season. So wherever you want to go with your Johnny, I'm doing pretty good on the basketball so far this year. I don't, I'm not been posting it because you know, it's not my sweet spot, but I've been doing pretty decent on college basketball this year so far. And you know, I'm a big game player, Greg, I'm a big game player. When the games get big, that's when Johnny B will show up. So I'll be ready for the tournament. Don't you worry. Yeah, well, I hope so. And and like I said, don't be shy about your picks. If you, you know, we're not going to judge you, you know, because we understand that it's not like football, you know. But we 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 do respect your opinion, and we want you to give out some picks even outside of the football season. So we'll get into that once we move past the Super Bowl next week. We're going to be doing all Super Bowl picks and everything else. So we're excited for that. Uh, Bear Truth Nine wants to ask me if there is a line as far as how far I would go to give up. No, there isn't. I would literally, Chubbs will go crazy. I would literally call, if they said, uh, hey, Miami's going to give us three first-round picks and Tua, I would say I will give you 
four for the day of the draft. I'll give you four first round picks, three second round picks, three what? third round. I, w- I would, what? I would, I would be saying every until they said okay. I'm saying picks. I literally do not care wow. because then I have Deshaun Watson and I will figure out the rest later. Well, I literally have to decide me to throw it. Not care. There is no line for me. Go get him and let's worry about the rest later. It's literally the same mindset I had the year they got Jay Cutler. And you know what happened? I went to the Bears Expo and they had George McCaskey. They had uh, Lovey Smith and Jerry Angel all sitting on a podium and there were 10,000 Bears fans in the Cadillac Club. And I gave them, I had the whole room give them a standing ovation for finally making a move and going and getting a quarterback to try to fix the quarterback problem in the city that we've never had a 4,000 yard quarterback. Never in the history of our franchise. I that's not, that's in, the, the quarterback in, in, in San Diego, LA, the Chargers quarterback, he had 4,000 yards in 14 games this year. We have never had a 4,000 yard quarterback. That's crazy, man. And Justin Herbert has already done that in 14 games in the NFL this year. So I am done with this conversation. Obviously, with the whole Jay Cutler and then Mitchell Trubisky back to back, we are exhausted as Bears fans. And I am at my wits' end. Hey, you want to cry about four first round picks? Uh, you know what? One of those first round picks is going to be a quarterback. So now we have to hope that quarterback works out. And then when he does it, we're going to have to find another first round quarterback. So I just, I'm done doing this. We know who Deshaun Watson is. He's 26 years old. You make a trade for him. He's your quarterback for the next 10 years. Aaron Rodgers is 36 right now. He's your quarterback for the next 10 years. I will take Deshaun Watson and figure out the rest later. Right. So, you need to adopt this mentality for Watson. Zero doubt, dog. Zero oh, doubt. I'm all in, and everybody that's trying to, hey, no, can't make me. I don't give a crap. Go ahead and 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 be your, uh, you know, uh, yeah, opposite view because you know that oh, you're not being realistic. I'm being realistic. You're delusional. I don't care if there's a chance. That's what I'm rooting for. Is that chance to happen? You want to play realistic and always hedge your bets and make sure you never get your feelings hurt because you want to believe in something that might not happen. Well, guess what? It's oh. sports, and that's how it is. All right, Greg, after your speech. I can't. I'm I excited, know. Bear Truth. Listen, nine. after your speech right now, I am now saying the Bears have a 10% chance. I <laughs> bumped it up 4%. Here's that speech. I know it's going to motivate him, so I'm not – Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm pumping it up from six percent to ten percent just for you after that speech. See, I'm moving the moving the needle here. I'm moving the needle. Those guys, Black and Dollar, they don't think we have any shot, and they're already making fun of people like me. He, yeah, Black was saying. In the chat, I called into Kaplan with the same similar rant that I just had, and Kaplan had to kick me off because I'm talking too much on his radio show, uh, the Cap and Jay Hood show from 7 to 10 a.m. on ESPN 1000. He kicks me off because I'm going crazy about how much I would give up to, for Deshaun Watson. And uh, Blex in the Twitch chat going, oh, I thought Braggs was a Mitch guy. Now he's a Deshaun Watson guy. Okay, I should have pulled up the picture. And I was like, I love how – now I oh I'm always beholden to Mitch. Like I guess Tanner Gentry and Mitch Trubisky are the only two people I can root for for the rest of my life, apparently. And I t- I told Black, I shot back at him like, well, I guess by your logic, then you're a Teddy Bridgewater guy. And he was like, he had, of course, night back. And he was like, well, if you mean Teddy's better than Mitch, yeah. Which is funny because Teddy actually had a worse year than Mitch and didn't make the playoffs, but I digress. You're because you are living in a contrarian world and you are just a contrarian girl. And- That's right. All day long. Hey, but I love those guys. Black and Abdallah, my guys. I love them. You know, hey, you gotta you gotta have a little fun with the sports with sports. You gotta, you know, you need you gotta throw the jabs a little bit. I get the jabs my way, you know, I'm the truther and everything else. So I got to have a little fun back. It's only fair. All is fair in love and sports, as they oh, say. That should be on a t-shirt. All is fair. We should, we, well, let's do it before somebody freaking takes it and puts it on. All is fair in love and sports. I say we do it before. And Jake, 
If you're listening, Jay, please check get, it, get it on a shirt line. before somebody else says it's theirs. Uh, so, you know, hey, this is wrapping up the show. Uh, we always like to have fun. Top Shots is always a fun segment where we kind of talk about everything. And, uh, you know, you know, Chubbs is worried about Gardner Minshew. But we're moving on to the fun stuff. Uh, my guy, Trey. Trey Tunes knows all about my angst. For I got Abdallah back on my side, but now I got to get Chris Black on my side. He's been busting my balls all year long with the Mitch stuff. So Trey Tunes does a Twitch sh- show every day from 12 to 2 during the weekdays, I believe, but maybe every day. And they're a lot of fun. If you tune into the Trey Tunes show, he takes song requests and they kind of just bullshit like we're doing right now. And it's a lot of fun. And Christopher Black's dad, Pat Black, has been in the chats for like the last few days. So when I called in to Trey's show, we were talking a little bit about this whole dilemma and Pat's, his dad was chiming in. So maybe my back door is Chris's dad here. Maybe that's how I can soften it, but he's a tough customer, Johnny. You know, I don't, you know, might not have crossed paths with one Christopher black, but on the Twitter streets, but he's a tough one. He's a tough one. Like I said, we like to have fun here at top shots and my guy, Al Fleischman, who's, our resident uh, parody song guy, you know, Trey Tunes actually does parody songs too, but our guy Al Fleischman has been providing us with parody songs here at Braggs in the Stands. And this is what I wanted to finish up our show with as we're hitting the two hour mark of Braggs in the Stands. Uh, Al Fleischman uh, made a parody song, you know, all, all during the Christmas year we, season, we were playing a bunch of his music. He made a parody song about my love affinity for Mitch Trubisky, which we overplayed here. And uh, he sent me a bunch of clips because he does a lot of work with uh, WGN morning news. He makes parody songs for them as well. So he sent me a bunch of those clips and, you know, because the green Bay Packers were taken down by our guy, Tom Brady, uh, giving whoa, whoa, Aaron whoa, Rodgers. Hey, my guy. That's not my guy. Hey, hey, not, hey. He there. took on the Packers. He's our guy. Yeah, we appreciate his time in the NFC first year in, and he gets as many NFC championships as Aaron Rodgers and Rex Grossman and Drew Brees. How about that? So, Ooh. you know, I want to have some fun. Like I said, it's always fun to jab back and forth with, you know, either, tw- you know, sports Twitter personalities or even, you know, Packer fans. And Al Fleischman made a great song called I hate the pack or hate the pack. And it's a, it's of course, you know, dedicated to the green Bay Packers and their fans. And this is Al Fleischman. And uh, this is his little parody song dedicated to that. I am a bears fan and I really hate the pack. I'm psyched up for this game. We're going to attack. I see the Packer fans dressed in green and gold. Those cheese head hats they wear are starting to grow mold. I never dreamed the Bears would be so bad this year. I hope they win this game cause it would make their year. I've seen the Bears lose games because of freaky plays. We've had enough of this, so let's wipe out Green Bay. I am a Bears fan and I really hate the pack. No mercy anymore, just beat them blue and black. I want to see a hater, hate, hater, hate, hater the pack, hater the pack, hater the pack. Here it is. Al Fleischman, Hate the Pack, parody song off of Paint It Black. You know, a really, really great Guitar Hero song. So Al's Al brings the heat. And Trey, like I said, Trey Tunes does parody songs too. So we're going to have to have them kind of maybe do some, some parody, you know, battles here. Because Al brings the heat. I know Trey does. Al's, uh, Al's daughter, you know, has done a few parody songs. They all do great work. And uh, we appreciate that. So I had to play the Packer hate song because, you know, they got taken down once again in the NFC championship and that put a smile to my face. So, uh, you know, yeah. Oh man. Those, yeah. Seeing some of those highlights of Cutler getting hit, definitely take you back to those days. Like I said, different forms of misery as a fan, you know, Chiefs fans are the only ones not living in misery right now. So it's, 
we fear no man, including yeah. your so-called goat. But um, we've hit, yeah, well, we're, we're gonna find out here. Yeah, we in, certainly in, are. In days. You better watch it, sir. Yeah, I you better watch it. You, I had all that Bills fan smoke for t- for ten days. All Bills Mafia, and they're like I said, a great fan base. They were bringing the smoke. We're the hottest team in the NFL. It didn't matter that we beat them earlier in the year. They brought the smoke for over a week. And what happened? The fire got put out. I love your Patrick Mahomes picture above your shoulder there behind yeah. you. No, right. the other way. You got the Tariq picture, which is really cool. But the the Mahomes picture is just funny. It's like a it's like a school picture. You just got it up like he's your son. It's you know, I always get made fun of for my Mitchell Trubisky love. And of course, your love for Patrick Mahomes is warranted. He is a great player who's brought you many great memories such as these where you and your beautiful wife get to have fun at AFC championship games. So I understand why you love Patrick Mahomes so much. I would be, you know, me as, I mean, look how much I love my crappy teams. You know, if they were great, I can only imagine how ridiculous of a fan I would be, but man, I'll tell you, you are really, really pushing it. Johnny B with your smack talk, because I wouldn't be tempting the football gods with that kind of bravado. Well, you know, it's dangerous. The, it's dangerous. A, a lot of weird stuff can happen in games. The ball obviously bounces weird directions. You know, we all know Tom Brady has a little thing with the refs. I mean, that's obviously official. I mean, he tried to high five one a couple of games ago, no doubt. But you know what? Football. It does. It looks like his high school sweetheart in the picture. It's like it's great. I love it. Hey, you know, I get the crap for the Mitchell Trubisky. I was I I thought about pulling up the picture that Shane Marsaw, my good buddy from the Tate Never Lies Network, he made a Photoshop of my face over Mitchell Trubisky's new just recently made fiance. And uh, it's a very creepy picture. And I was thinking about subjecting Tanner to the picture because it is funny, but it's also extremely creepy and it's a little bit of an invasion of privacy. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to overstep, you know, and, and, you know, I know, you know, Mitch already knows how ridiculous of a fan I am. So I don't want to scare these guys already any more than I already do. I just want to tell you that the schoolboy portrait of Mahomes over my shoulder is actually <laughs> from one of my duck race partners, and she specializes in portraits of athletes. She does the Chiefs. The Chiefs brought her into the stadium uh, to do a feature, which she did on the Honey Badger. She actually did a, uh, a piece for Chris Carson of the Seahawks, which was phenomenal. She did a King Henry, and she just sold a print – that she did, or uh, not a print, uh, an original to one of the Chiefs players as well. So you can say that it is a schoolboy over my shoulder, but that, Greg, is not only one of my Duck Race partners, but this lady is going to be world famous, and she's well on her way already. Okay. All right. I respect it. I don't neglect it. I'm just giving you a little crap. And, yeah, I'm not trying to blitz this Chiefs, but I'm just – that's for me as a fan. If I got to this point, I don't know, you know – When the Cubs made the World Series in 2016, we were the better team than the Indians. I was certainly confident, but I wasn't talking any smack because, I mean, 108 years is 108 years. So you're not you're not tempting that kind of fate. And you weren't as talky. Greg, we just won the Super Bowl. Not even exactly. I was going to say going back to last year, you were pretty confident they were going to win even beforehand, even though all the history of the Chiefs hadn't been success yet and you hadn't felt that Super Bowl glory I think you knew it was coming and I felt like that same way a little bit with the Cubs it was probably a little more reserved I wasn't talking as much I felt like but I had the signs this you see him in our intro show I had the this is this is still happening and that was at game five when we were down three one so I still had confidence in my team on the biggest stage because I knew at that moment they were capable of it so I guess as a fan you do have that moment where, where you've been with a team that has struggled for so long, when it's finally that time, you you do know it. it it's, like, it's like in your heart. There's nothing that you can explain. And, and I think as a fan, you're always trying to reach to find that feeling. So like the 2018 Bears, it like had that taste. So you're like, all right, this is it. This is it. And it doesn't happen. And that's what sports is all about. And it makes you come back. But 
it is uh you know it when you see it you feel it when your team it's finally your turn you definitely feel it and it grows it's growing and it's growing i'll just tell you this last week at the afc championship the unstoppable bills that's what everybody was saying. The media was all over it. And obviously, they're a great team. There's no doubt. And Josh Allen is getting better and better, and he's going to get better. But Patrick Mahomes, uh, on the first drive, had a pass to Tyreek Hill that was maybe the best pass of the game, and Tyreek didn't come down with it. It was a drop. It was listed as a drop. And that was the only time, Greg, that our punter saw the field other than holding extra points. We only punted one time in that game. That was it. And it was off a dropped pass. Yeah, you guys are a well-oiled machine. There's no yeah. question about it. I mean, it's going to be a tall order even for the GOAT and the Bucks being at their home stadium against you guys. Do you believe, we talked about this a little bit last week, you know how Chiefs fans travel. You know how they're willing to spend. You're certainly willing to do it if it's the right decision. And I know there's other Chiefs fans that are like you out there. You referenced a few tonight on this show. Do you believe, even though the game is being held at Tampa, Tampa Bay's home stadium, do you believe that there will be more Chiefs fans inside the stadium than Tampa Bay fans? Because as you know all too well, it's about you know being able to afford it at the end of the day. Yeah, last year it was definitely more Chiefs fans than 49er fans in a full stadium. Uh, I, I would say it was 60% Chiefs fans, you know, maybe 30% uh, 49ers fans, and then a weird, you know, like corporate and people that just like wanted to go to the game or whatever that had the rest this year. I'm not so sure, you know, like, uh, I, you know, a lot of bucks fans, you know, I, I used to know a guy that was a bucks fan and he was kind of fair weather when they were playing. Well, obviously there's a lot of hype coming with Brady. You know, it's unfortunate that we have the, the virus and it's gonna, it's gonna hinder the attendance. Um, I'm definitely going to say it'll probably be more uh, bucks fans there uh, than Chiefs fans this year. I do know a lot of people that are going that are Chiefs fans, and I know that they're sending a lot of the healthcare workers from Kansas City there as well. They fill out applications. And yeah, some Bears fans, Peanut yeah. Tillman surprised some of the Bears fans that were mel- had a he- health medical workers, and of course, my wife wasn't asked. You know, and I, you know, but I'm not. I'm not jealous. I'm just saying. And, uh, like Chubbs uh, wants to know. You know, as we're talking about the fans, but he wants to know if you're concerned at all you know, about the 32nd ranked red zone defense that the Chiefs hold against the GOAT. Are you concerned about this? I, they they got to get in the red zone. Look at how he's not worried. I'm okay. I, I, like, I am 0% worried. I don't know if I can say that anymore. See, now I'm going the reverse, reverse blitz, Richard. He thinks, I'm, he thinks I'm trying to put the hijinks on you, but then I reversed it a minute ago because I talked the Chiefs up. Now I'm going back because, dude, you're talking a big game here, and this is this is Tom Brady. And like I said, I, I hate to drum up bad memories, but I just it sticks it just sticks out to me the time when Abby was rooting against Tom Brady against the Falcons at our house. And I can I can feel Abby how much he didn't like Tom, and He's now there he is in the Super Bowl. I remember how he beat you guys. In the AFC Championship, it was very dramatic. He's one of those guys. He's like Aaron Rodgers to the Bears. Yes, How the- many times has Tom Brady beaten the Chiefs in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform? I don't know. Totally, zero. You, zero. How many times has Patrick Mahomes beat Tom Brady when he's wearing a Buccaneers uniform? Zero? No. Tom, we destroyed them, dude. Oh, just, okay, okay. You know we already destroyed them, right? Okay. I uh, yeah, yeah, this year, right? You guys yeah. killed him. Killed yeah, him. and 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 Tyreek Hill had like 200 yards, right? 272 yards or something. I don't know. We'll see. We got Trey saying he went to Arrowhead the last time the Bears played the Chiefs. I actually sold my tickets that day because all the Bears Cutler still the quarterback that game? I believe he was, but the, all the Bears fans were fighting to go to the game on my limited seating, so I just sold them. So okay. whoever well, got Rose Duck seven. Jones, Duck Jones got Bucks by 14. Plus well, good luck to him because Patrick <laughs> Mahomes has never lost an NFL game by more than one possession. Interesting bet. Yes. Uh, Johnny, and it's not anger, it's just supreme confidence. I mean, Johnny's when always when you're the champs, when you're the champs, you're gonna know the smoke that comes with it. We get everybody's best shot every week. It don't matter if it's the Falcons, it doesn't matter if it's the Chubbs, Raiders. Chubbs thinks it's Everybody gonna be a shootout. Wants to beat the champs. We went undefeated on the road this year against some really good teams. 
I'm confident in my squad. I'm not mad. I'm just mad if anybody are going to lose your money. That's all. Okay. I don't blame you. I don't blame you for being confident, man. I mean, he's a great player. He's a great team. Back-to-back years in the Super Bowl. I mean, Greg, just listen to that stat I just gave you, including playoffs. I want you to listen to it one more. All right, time. I'm going to listen. I'm, gonna listen. Is, I'm more- always all over the control. Yes. So he it's played one game. game as a rookie when it didn't matter at the end of the season. So including that, which he did win that game, Patrick Mahomes has never lost an NFL game by more than one possession, including winning a Super Bowl, an MVP, and a Super Bowl MVP. And now he's in three straight AFC championships. Why would I be worried? I, I, you have no reason to be. You have never none, lost none whatsoever. Any, never lost by 10. Never lost by nine, ever. Not one time yet. Okay. Well, I mean, it's exciting stuff, and you're certainly on the right side. You're on the favored side, so I don't blame you for being confident, but I'd just be a little careful. You know, that's all I'm saying. And, uh, you know, I, we got the dark side. Yes. Please, you. Deshaun Watson, come to the Bears for Greg so he can know the feelings that I have of confidence. And we'll see. It's a, as we all know, and as I tried to point out when Mitch Trubisky was here, it takes more than a quarterback to win, and I understand that, even though I'm ready to give up an entire farm of assets to get <laughs> Deshaun Watson. But, you know, uh, it's not a given if we get him. But, yes, it certainly helps you get closer to that goal of, being Super Bowl champions, because look at the look at Mahomes, look at the final four, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, who's an up and comer, and of course Patrick Mahomes. It's a quarterback league now. It's not the league that it was when we were growing up in the nineties and early two thousands. It's evolved into a league that, you know, where you got to be ready to put up 35 plus against Mahomes if you want to win a Super Bowl. The only way to do that is with big time generational talent at quarterback and Guess what? One of them is available on the market, ready, demanding a trade. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, when you, Alan Robinson don't want me to believe everything I read. Well, maybe I shouldn't believe your tweets then because I'm reading that. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. And I I'm gonna Robinson said this. he was going to go to the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. So, that about wraps things up. We'll see what happens here. Uh, we got a lot more fun uh, coming up here. Of course, next week is going to be our Super Bowl s- shows. We're going to do a show probably, you know, on our usual Friday. And then I was talking to Jake a little bit about possibly doing a show Super Bowl Sunday, maybe in the morning. And depending on what your status is, whether you're going, if you're not, if you end up not, maybe you can sit in for a little session on a on a Sunday morning. But we can talk about that as the week goes. But those are some of my thoughts as we go into the Super Bowl. Certainly going to be doing, at the very least, our Friday show where we're kicking kicking back and, and talking some Chiefs, Bucks, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Let's go. Hey, Johnny B looking to reclaim his glory. Isn't that right, my man? I mean, does this picture ever get old? Never. Never right. gets old. I hope I have a matching one. I don't know. Like I said, there's only a 40% chance right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I hope I have a matching one. If I were you and I, you know, hey, I don't tell I can understand chase the chase in the chasing the moment, chasing the memory. Cause that's what I'm all about. When I go to sports games, I, I keep going. People are like, why do you go to so many games? I'm always chasing that moment, that memory that everyone has when they, the, the one game they've ever been to. I try to make that every weekend, there even we though that's an impossible dream. That's what I try to do back in our normal lives when we were able to go to games freely. So I understand your willingness of wanting to try to go again this year, but with the tickets being limited, being in Tampa, so I'm sure it's drived up that way, and the fact that you've seen them win it, man, it'd be tough for me as because I know how much they are, and it's a risk because if I'm spending it, they have to win at that point. You know, not that they ha- they already have to win if you're going or not going, but if you're going, then they double have to win. That's just how it goes. So you've already seen them win. It's almost like maybe you should just – you know, uh, stay. No pressure. Look at this. Uh, 
<laughs> See, <laughs> you're crazy. You're crazy. I'm not like that. I'm a little. Let's go. Let's I'm roll the dice, baby. Let's roll it back. Well, Doug Jones says good luck on Sunday. We're going to be back next week talking Super Bowl, so you can join us, and we'll be diving e- even deeper into this, and maybe we can get Abby to come on and uh, and talk about her dreams and her fears because I know she's just as confident as you are and, and enjoys this stuff just as much as right. you do. So we're One excited for thing. you guys. One more thing before you go. I want you to know. That I put a bet down on the Chiefs last week at minus 13. Okay. I, I moved the spread the other way. Okay. Hey. All right. That's all you need I'm, to know. I'm excited for you. I have no doubts, man. It's the Chiefs. They're the juggernaut. I understand your supreme confidence in them. So I'm excited for you guys. It's a lot of fun. Back to back years, man. Let's so uh, we shall see what happens. So uh, it's been a fun week for me. This is what I've been doing, working and playing with Addison in the snow. Uh, she's getting so big and it's, that's kind of my, my daily routine today. Uh, a not cool announcement. I've been, we, Jenny and I, and, and even my mom, cause we're living at my mom's temporarily where we try to find a house. Uh, we're potty training Addison and she, she did one and number two, both in the potty for the first time. Number two, she's been doing number one a few times in the potty, not to get too deep into it, but first time number two in the potty today. How you like it? Bam, bam. That's Love my girl, own. Addison that's, Grace. That's very exciting. A pooping in the pate. That's what we sing to her, and she loves it. So we're excited for it, and we're excited for more fun here at Bragg's in the stands. I want to thank everyone in the chat that hung out tonight. Uh, Johnny B never wavers uh, Chubbs 82. And again, I want to thank Chubbs and bear truth nine and the factor. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. Duck Jones, uh, all everybody, you know, all the way from the beginning of the show, hanging out, Trey, uh, Trey tunes, looking forward to bringing you on here at Braggs and the stands. I hopped on his show. I'll make sure you check that out on Twitch, the Trey tunes show. He's a great guy. And, uh, Really, really fun show. Make sure you give that a follow. So, again, thank you guys for all hanging out. Again, I want to thank our guy, Tanner Gentry, for joining the show tonight. It was a lot of fun to chop it up with Tanner Gentry. Now playing for the Buffalo Bills. Go get former, it, man. Go get it. Formerly of the Chicago Bears. That's right. Go up and get it. And that's exactly what Tanner has done for quite some time. And now he's back with his college teammate. And uh, we couldn't be happier for him. Uh, This is what he's been doing here on the NFL level for a while now, and hopefully he can start to do that, you know, and and show it not just on the practice field, but on the, on the big stage, you know, uh, the bills playing in the AFC championship. I know Tanner is itching to get to that stage and show just what he can do at that level with his college teammate, Josh Allen. So we're excited for him truly here at Braggs in the stands. He had some really nice words to say for us and we appreciate him and uh, can't wait to bring him back on as he evolves his career in the national football league. And again, I want to thank Al Fleischman and Danny Parkins for their, their contributions to the show Al with his parody song and Danny with his amazing rant to Deshaun Watson, Ron Rupp. Now shout out to you. Uh, thank you Chubbs for your Illinois update. They are in the second half. So I got to quit talking so we can get to watching some basketball. Let Johnny B get to his lovely wife, Abby. Great. And I can finally talk to Jenny, Jenny. Cause uh, I know she's missing me. She had to put Eddie down while I did the show. So not saying I, I I'm upset cause she's been a handful the last couple of weeks. So I'll take it. But again, thanks for tuning in everybody. This is Braggs in the Stands. We will catch you next week for Super Bowl week, and we are excited for that. We will catch up with you real soon. Uh, That's right, all day, every day. And make sure you always bear down. Some really special guests coming next week. So get ready. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. I'm hot.